Welcome guys to the Slowpoke world and look who we've got. We've got Joe from Omnipoke here for another big hench vivid voltage standard tier list video. Uh, if I have a little scroll down here, we can see the multitude of stuff we have to cover. We've got a good, we got, we got a lot here. So Joe, how are we feeling, number one? Yeah, I'm very excited. Vivid voltage changes some stuff. So <laughs> hopefully this is good. <laughs> yeah, so, but I don't know about you, Joe, but I think initially, right, I say most of us content creators and people look at the voltage and think, ah, this is rubbish. But actually, you play the stuff on TC, Joe, some stuff it does, there has been a little bit of a rumble. So I have a feeling we could have some fun here. So yeah. let's just get started. Um, uh, let's get started with a deck, Joe, that I know you have been championing and I haven't given it the time of day. So we're going to start off with a Cafable Kafari Dolls deck. Now, <laughs> granted, guys, Clever Clogs over there. Yes, that is the one cafe, but it shows how much I pay attention to this deck. So here's our tier list here. S1, 1.52, 2.53. Joe, where do we think that's going? Very low on the tier list, I think. It's definitely a rogue archetype because it can't be ADP or Luke Metal and... Spoiler alert, I think those two decks are very, very good. Mm. So when you can't really beat those, you're in trouble straight away. And it also has a strange engine that can be punished by slow starts and all sorts of other things. You can lose sometimes just to like Wondrous Labyrinth, which Center Scorch can play. Um, so yeah, it, uh, well, even Orbeetle sometimes plays uh, that as well now. And you lose to Orbeetle just spreading on you. There's so many things that's just random that you lose to. So it, it's just cool to show off that deck, but it's really yeah. still like very rogue and, and uh, quite poor in the meta right now. I'm not even... What's its wing con? Is this card energy stalling? What does it yeah, What does it even do? Does it Does it yeah. use the, 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 the twin energy attack to try and take prizes? What is it? Yeah, so it's it's slow grinding prizes. Think of like a greedent kind of win condition. Instead of doing 100 a turn, you're doing 60. But the upside is you're consistently removing at least one energy card per turn because you have Prankish with Clefable. So the whole idea is that uh, decks that attack for more than one energy, you're constantly stopping them attacking altogether. So you're playing Polka Dolls um, not just because, like, yes, they can be walls at times, but mm. the idea is, against the right matchup, they just stop attacking you altogether. Uh, okay. They just, like, don't ever hit you. Um, but Prankish only works for the active, so you have mm. to still continue, like, bosses orders stuff up to chase the energy. So it's still, like, really rough and rogue. It's just something that wasn't possible until we had Memory Capsule. So it's still yeah. rogue, pretty certain it's poor, but it's a combo that wasn't possible until now, which is, I guess, something. Okay. So if that being said, if it doesn't have a chance against ADP or loot metal, it can't be. I mean, I, I haven't touched this deck, so I'm lying on you. Like I said, the tiers we've got S1, 1.52, 2.53, fun, maybe, question mark, and then just don't, exclamation mark. So they're, they're I would, I'm, yeah, I would say fun, maybe. <laughs> like fun, maybe. like if, if you're into that sort of infinite loop kind of thing, it plays differently to most of the decks. So like maybe it's a bit of fun for you. Maybe it's something that you can fritter some time on. And maybe there's something there as well, because when it, whenever there is an infinite loop available in the game, I'm always kind of scared. Yeah. So it, it's like someone with a bigger brain than me can maybe make that combo more dangerous. But from where <laughs> I'm sitting right now, I think it's just something to experiment with, but nothing, nothing groundbreaking at all. Okay, well, there we go. That's the first one. Knock that off nice and easy, baby. So our next one, Joe. Is we'll, we'll go straight from the bottom to the tip. We're going to go jump all the way back up. We're going to shake up to Luke Metal. Now, everyone, I think, is in agreement that Luke Metal has got a lot better in Vivid Voltage. Um, I, I initially thought, because I thought Churchester Baths was nuts, but a load of initial lists, and I think yours was Joe, Joe. I'm not sure if you profiled it. I saw someone. They're still playing the swell. So, if it's not the Churchester Bath that's make it a lot better, what is it and why? Uh, so, I actually don't think it's too much better i think it's oh, very okay. similar to where it was so that that's the big deal because even like even the weakness guards were played as like a one or two count and now you get to play three to four coating ah, metals which, okay. which makes it much more consistent against the fire decks uh but but fire decks can easily just add giratina anyway if they're yep. really concerned like i've seen center scorch already go for that uh, maybe a little bit more difficult for Baby Blacephalon, but they can reach one-shots regardless. 
So I think um, it, it's really coating metal, and the fact that you get to play potentially Aegis slash V. Yeah. I've seen some lists even add in a one-one line, so they play a V Max as well for some extra yep. like stopping power, which I think is quite interesting. Um, but I actually think it gets worse into ADP because Leon is an option for ADP now. Um, so I actually think it, it gets slightly better by the coating, but I think it's going to be almost identical to where it has been previously, to be honest. Okay. But like that being said, though, Luke Mail is one of the best decks in last format. Mm -hmm. So we're not, we can't be saying less than like, I'd, I mean, I'd have it personally tier one. That's, that's Yes, yeah, I yeah. would still put it in one. I think a lot of people tout like coating metal as like the answer to put it in S, but I think it got weaker against ADP and the fire decks can still choose to tech yeah. for the new tech if they want to. Yeah. Um, and just a note on Sir Chester, it makes like they can't really play that card because then they just lose to ADP unless they also play their own Leons, which just sucks. Okay, so, okay. See, this is, yeah. This is if I get someone clever like Joe on, they're not just me who thinks, oh, this is good, let's play it. Like, there's actually reasons. <laughs> yeah. But that's true, though, like, um, yeah. with the uh, metal coating, because my favorite way to play Center Scorch was like Senti Nets anyway, which already yep. plays already plays the Tina. So if someone was going to try and get clever and good hell about that weakness, I'm like, yeah, lol, see that later. Bang! <laughs> like you know yeah. what I mean. So, well, yeah. I, I mean, people people even played the Giratina before just because it helped like the Eternatus matchup where yeah. you just like remove an attachment from them, so then yeah. you only have to kill one Eternatus and you can still win. Mm -hmm. So the card was already reasonable, and now there's yeah. like extra reason to play Giratina. So I'd expect some Giratina to be sneaking back into the fire decks. Mm. So especially if it's such an easy card to play if you were playing the, you know your nets and your Achies and all that. So I yep. think Luke Metal is a very safe one. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think I think um, out of the new decks that come out, I think you enjoy like you really enjoy Colossal. You are pretty okay against the new Whimsicott deck. You you instantly win Orb Beetle, um, and any uptick in like Inteleon or any of these other um, like Salamance Vmax potentially as well with the new and like Galarian uh, Darmanitan, those sorts of spreading decks that try and use telescopic sight. Yeah. You're gonna do really well against those. So. Yeah. It's good at beating random nonsense. <laughs> so no, it is, so yeah. that's always going to put it quite high on the tier list, I think. <laughs> yeah, the random nonsense stopper. But I'd, yeah. I'd argue it's more helpful when there's IRL events. You get to like a League Cup and someone's playing something random. But you can still, it still, still has value in your online events <laughs> as well. You never know what people are queuing online these days. No, you never yeah. see me on a ladder. Oh, my Lord. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's uh, keep it moving. So, speaking of new tanky decks colossal v max now i think everyone got really excited about colossal because it's a pretty unique way to play the game we haven't seen something kind of like it um i'm actually going away back to primal ground on but even so the eruption shots are unique sort of uh take on attacking let's say um everyone got hyped good typing but i in my initial testing joe i think it's kind of a bit lackluster in my opinion. Uh, it hasn't lived up to my initial hype, at least. Uh, how is it falling for you, Colossal? I think it's just fine. I think it sits in the meta okay. It's not groundbreaking, but it, mm. it's a, it seems decent. Um, I like its placement. I feel like you have to sort of pick the right tournament for him to actually like spike a tournament mm. and take a big dub. I think it, its kind of success is based on, you know, if people think it's bad enough to still play Picarom and still play yeah. Eternatus, which I think will do, then you do still have some good matchups. There's still some ugly matchups right now. Um, you don't appreciate the random amount of hype that Orbitals had. I think that won't yeah. last, and that yeah. probably helps Colossal. Um, and I think once people figure out that the Luke Metal matchup is actually worse into ADP, that also bodes well for Colossal, because that's one of your hardest matchups also. So I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to be a Tier 2 deck um personally um but it may be one that we have to like wait a month and see where the meta's at and then either the meta's not right for colossal and it mm. just doesn't see play despite being a good card or my suspicion is that picaron will still see play uh eternatus will still see enough play um that colossal will have enough good matchups to you know at least like top eight some events because it is still quite simple of an archetype to actually set up yeah. um and it does have a lot of good arc, like traits to it, you know. Mm. It doesn't have insane damage output, but it's great at Grinching, Easy Prize, uh, like Crobats and Dedenes for one attachment. It's got huge bulk behind it. So there's selling points there, like no doubt. 
Mm. It's just into ADP and into Luke Metal right now, which are probably the two most popular decks. It's going to struggle a little bit, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, do you fall on the whole don't play any two prizes, just play like a Snorlax uh, or Anguru type thing with your Colossal or...? Uh, no, uh, mostly because you normally need to have two Orangaroos down. So mm. I, I don't think the Snorlax build works because the whole basis of Snorlax is trying to only give up two individual prize Pokemon and still make them go through two, yep. three prizes. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to play that deck with only one Orangaroo in play. Like, I feel yep. like you always yep. need at least two um, to make plays pre and post research or pre and post Adene. Um, so I think that's the better way to go. Okay, colossal rematch. Really interesting though. As a poke, as a deck, I love the sort of big tanky ground on S type feel. Where it's just like him in the active, got three energy on, you got your two angles in the back. It is fun to play, but uh, I think I initially got a bit too excited, and I thought it would be a bit of a bit of a ground shaker, and uh, it hasn't quite panned out that way so far. But hey, I'm yet to profile it yet, so you never know. I could get more excited as time goes on. Now, here is a deck, Joe, that I get really excited about and <laughs> probably way too much. Look at his face. <laughs> okay, it might not be. It's, it's not the one you're thinking of, right? <laughs> so, we have a Raikou Amazing Rare there, Joe. Okay. Ooh. There's a few ways we can play this. I think Rare Candy did, uh, what did they do? Uh, like a bolt on version. Um, someone, uh, I can't remember, it might have been Azul doing the Trumbeak. I quite like the Butterfree, personally. But uh, I'm going to put them all together for this uh, for this one. I think it's really fun, Jerry. It's really good. 120, pop, pop, pop. Two shot, a lot of things. You better, you better not be benching a Daniel Crowbats against me. I'm going to get them. Joe, you played much Raikou. Embarrassingly, I have played a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Every way I've played the deck is quite poor, I would oh, say. Joe. <laughs> Shoot me down. Uh have you tried yeah, Butterfree? I haven't tried Butterfree, no. <laughs> that's the way you're going wrong. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't think I don't think a stage two is gonna change my opinions of this sort of archetype. Yeah, to but be it, honest with you. Yeah, you can you can evolve it every turn. You can just do, 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 you know. <laughs> I mean you can, but you have to draw really well. Oh, well, you know, we, we believe in the heart of the cards over here, Joe, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um... Uh, see, see, that's the difference between you and me. I'm sceptical that I can get an energy drop on an ADP on turn one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to let you into a little secret. Right? I got the deck pro up for this come out next uh, later on this week. There is a game where I get not one but a free turn one, Joe. We get two <laughs> turn one. <laughs> um but with that all being said you know i'm a big excitable geezer me i live for the big fun games and turns uh i wish i could two shot v max that would be kind of cool um i think the biggest problem i find with it though is um even with butterfree version maybe trombeak version can get around this but Let's say you Butterfree. If they boss his orders that work out, you, you're very upset. Um, but if the, when that work out goes down, you now have to like do another Butterfree or go nuts on your turbo patch. Neither of which are kind of ideal. So just for that reason alone, I can't really place it too high. Even though I know Joe wouldn't let me, but even if Joe wasn't, I couldn't really. I couldn't in my heart of hearts, guys. I'd be lying to you. So um, I don't know if it's bad enough for fun, maybe, though. I don't know. I'm going to put it in free. Just because I don't want, uh, to, don't want, I don't want to put it in fun, fun maybe. I don't think I don't think this deck deserves a number, to be honest. <laughs> he doesn't think it deserves a number. Well, until you on calm down, fella. Until you on trying to get involved. We'll come to you later, don't worry. Okay, you know I'll, I'll put it in fun maybe, but this one, if I see some bad decks I don't like in tier three, why can't I jump in straight back up, Joe? You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So. Let's move it on. Since um, Intellion wanted to get involved, Longview Scope is one of my favourite cards in a long time. It's opened up the possibility with so many decks. Um, like Galarian, Dimanitan, VMAX, that is an absolute damage counter thrower, let me tell you. Um, but I'd say the less glamorous Intellion in the sense that you're not putting out as much damage, but you could argue it's better. So you can target out exactly what you want and, you know, two shot, all this good stuff. Um, how much of a boost do you think Longview is to Intellion, Joe? 
I think it's a big boost. I think mm. it's a really big boost, actually. Um, I think it makes your Picaron matchups actually winnable now, even with weakness. Yeah. I think yeah. it makes you much better against ADP. It makes you much, much better against Eternatus, which was one of your weaker matchups. Um, and it, yeah, just that snipe is super dangerous, even against every one prize deck out there now um that pretty much always plays one oracorio like you just get so much value out of this the telescopic sites that you play and in certain situations you don't even need to find it on the first turn that you're using that spread nah. like even into like into like zations and stuff you can get that 60 damage off and then you're threatening 90 into 90 so it can come late and still be really valuable uh, for you so i think inteleon in a vacuum does get a lot better i think really i've only added like two telescopic sites to the deck i haven't made much more space yeah. um because you're still so combo heavy and that's not going to change about inteleon you're still going to lose a lot of games because of the slowness factor if you don't hit your like yeah. early snom and your early vmax into frost Morph into bucket bucket or whatever yeah um the telescopic site gives like makes your win condition super insane like it, it's a huge payoff now to play inteleon and if the deck does what it wants to do it's actually mm. got one of the most powerful um effects in the game to be honest so I think it, it's a lot better in a vacuum. Yeah, but I guess the only thing that's holding it back, though, is the amount of time I've been playing Inteleon, and turn two, I get the Inteleon VMAX Frost Moth switch option, but two energy, and you're like, oh, <laughs> god damn. <laughs> uh, the amount of time, like, oh, Hydro Sniper, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I think, in all honesty, I'm tempted by like a 2 or a 1.5. Does that sound too crazy? I like it as 1.5. Yeah. I'm, I'm expecting, like, low-key, there's a ton of hype around Luke Metal right now, which is a problem for Inteleon. Mm -hmm. But I think once Luke Metal hype decreases, it becomes one of the most solid 1.5s because yeah. it has to be a 0.5 because it's still a high roll deck. Mm -hmm. But its meta placement will be great, I think. So, yeah. yeah. And it's one of those where, like, the amount of times I've, I've been playing against it, online and you're like okay yeah it's fine no i think you know what's going to happen and then man that 90 whoo that creeps up on you that's just like bis bash all of a sudden you're like yo my guy's got a five five turn next turn if i don't yeah. win exactly now <laughs> and it's just like what where's this come from don't underestimate yeah. that long view man that long view whoo especially in tell you and like you know what i mean you, you like you, you it's got me second guessing the Denard. If I put that down, it's not lot long for this world, let me tell you. Like, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then if you try and get clever and don't put it down, and you're not seeing cards, and then, it's the, hey, they're still doing 160 and you're active and, you know, uh, stick to the bench somewhere else. Like, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, I'm impressed with Inteleon so far. I am impressed. Uh, let's keep it moving. What am I not impressed with, though? What am I not impressed with? Let's just go from high to low. Um... Vicavolt, that's a deck I'm not impressed with. How do you feel about Vicavolt, Joe? How are you? How is it even meant to be built these days? I don't even know how it's meant to be built these days. No, I think I've put I've put Paraset there because I think that was the one on, All the, right, right. on the tail and just before Vivid. That seemed to have a little bit of traction in some of the online events. Um, whether or not that's the best way, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I remember someone on Twitter was trying to convince me that Electro breaks the deck. I don't really see it, to be honest with you. But um, is there anything to Vicar Vault now, Joe, is my question. I don't see what's come out of Vivid Voltage that makes me feel any differently about the deck. So I would put it in, like, Tier 3. Tier 3. Yeah, I think we're uh, in agreement there. It, gains a new, it gets a new auto win in Whimsicott. That's the only change for Vicar Vault. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I just don't... Uh, it just doesn't do enough damage, does it? Like, in one of the... Spoiler alert. In one of the Raikou games, uh, I absolutely decimate a Vicar Vault because they can't even deal with a Raikou. I'm just like, right, ping, 120, yeah. 120, and they fill their bench. They've only got two Vicar Vaults down. All I have to do is just do his attack one more time and I win. They do 50. You're like, pop pop, there you go again. <laughs> like, see ya. <laughs> yeah. It's just 50, and especially if you're hitting into, like, look, like, look at the top of this so far, what we've got. Loot Metal, what's that, like, 10 hit? Uh, uh, Intellion, I mean, you hit Intellion for weakness, but I tell you what, if you dare put down the Dene, <laughs> you can still lose that game. Uh, Colossal VMAX, good luck, just good luck, full stop, like, so, I mean, granted, we haven't filled the tier list out so far, but they're three high-tier decks where, and all of a sudden, like, what matchup with Vicavolt? Do you flip over and think, yeah, I got this one? Apart from Whimsicott, like, I don't know if I can't think of any. Um, yeah. 
And if it's not like a me, great deck. No, yeah. and if you're anything like me, I want to be able to flip over a match sometimes. Like, yep, yeah, got this one in a bag. I can play it 30% and I'm still going to win. And you don't get that with Vicar Vault. So, yeah, you can stay right down there, buddy. <clears throat> right. Thinking about it. Gyro Sean, shout out to you. Mention this to me on Twitter and on one of my, um, what's it called, Rumble series videos where I was talking about ADP and how I didn't think ADP, uh, in, in a nutshell, I don't think ADP is a problem because three prize are the problem. I can't think of any two prize, one prize deck that immediately jumps to tier one if ADP is not there. He, Gloro saw and left in the comments, he thinks Turbo Bolton is a deck that is gate kept by ADP. Um, and Joe, I don't, I haven't really given Bolton much thought, but it does gain Electrode, and I did forget about this. So, have you given a Turbo Bolton deck much thought? Uh, not massively. Um, I'm just trying to think if an Electrode Bolton is going to be enough sustainable damage for you to actually win the game. It still sounds like low tempo to me. It mm. still, it still seems like it'll, it like trying to lean into reset stamp is good and all, and you will be fairly consistent with just trying to spam Boltons and maybe adding in one Choo Choo. I think the the main combo I saw with Choo Choo, or sorry, with Electrode was Raichu Raichu because yes. it's so good to stamp Paralyze. So maybe playing a heavy Bolton that then has a Raichu Raichu, which is actually like a safe place to put your energy against basically Zush Index that will otherwise one-shot you and you lose all your damage. Mm. Um, that could possibly work. Uh, so maybe a combination of Choo Choo Boltons uh, with Electrode. But then your problem is when you blow up an electrode, they only need to knock out one choo choo and one Bolton. Yeah. Uh, and if you have to pop multiple electrode, that's a problem for you. Like, yes, you're making stamp stronger, but your Boltons are still uh, vulnerable, I think. Yeah. Um, it's done nothing so far. <laughs> I think Bolton is just the perfect utility card for Pika Rom. I, I don't yeah. think it's like good enough to build around because oftentimes you go electrify into full blitz which then actually gets you your field of energy cards it's not like mm -hmm. you electrify straight into bolt storm unless you're hitting small stuff or setting up a two shot because yeah. you've found coco or whatever but um yeah i don't think bolton's worth building around solo there's just better lightning cards that you can weave in on certain turns yeah no for sure i've always found with bolton like like you said there's so many different lightning uh a sort of attackers you've even got zapdos to even think about now um that I feel is it like a box X deck is why Pico, in my opinion, works so well. You've got the option to paralyze with Raichu, Raichu. You, you, you can, if you've got a lot of energy and play quick, Turbo button can get you a sneaky KO on something if you've got enough mm. there, you know. But yeah, as a standalone, I don't know. I think it's too much energy. Was it 30, 10 plus 30, right? You know, we've got, we've got some cards up here, 300 plus HP. Like, come on. So It's like, it's... Where it's most dangerous is when you've just been able to big charm a peak rom and it's not being killed, and then there is like yeah. nine, ten energy in play, and that's when you attach your extra energy to the Bolton that you electrified with turn one, and then it is crazy damage. But it's like that's what makes peak rom good. That's not what's going to make a Bolton solo deck good because you could yeah. just fall on your face if they, you know, even if they just gust the thing you electrified to, then your next Bolt Storm is going to be like 80 or something yeah. stupid, you know. And, and at that point, you're knocking about Vicarbolt damage, you know what I mean? And you heard what I said about Vicarbolt, so... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, with that being said, um, the thing, I, don't even, I don't even see yourself picking up easy games with Bolton, either. Like I said, like I love me some easy games, but I don't think it's just going to happen. So, I'm thinking, is Tier 3 too... Is that is that sensible? I think you? I think Tier 3 is very fair. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. We came to an agreement there. I'd put it above Vicarbolt if it helps. Yeah, 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 I'll put it above Vicarbolt. <laughs> <laughs> web, the website is just really slow to me, but I will arrange. Oh, let's see, Colossal, get back down there, mate. I, I like you. You're not in that tier. I play, <laughs> played you way too many times in OPOP League, and you ain't got me no dubs yet, so maybe she's there. Anyway, oh. let's keep it moving. <laughs> um, with a deck that I was uh, speaking of electric types, um, shout out Dark, Dark Phoenix. Uh, he brought this up on our attention. I know you've profiled it as well, Joe. We were just talking about it. The Raichu, Raichu sort of almost standalone S paralysis lock deck. This on paper seems pretty nuts, right? Because Raichu, Raichu, we, know, we, can all, uh, we, we all know 80 plus 80 with paralysis is nuts. It's a clean two shot on most things. We all know paralysis is nuts in itself, the best special condition in the game. Um, granted, there might be a lot of switch going about now, but you ain't got so many of those. Um... Yeah, just auto paralysis every turn. It's just nuts. Have you actually played much of it, Joe? How's it, how's it been going for you? I've played like a hand, not more than a handful of games, but I think it's fine. I think it's pretty solid. Uh, 
yes, there are some turns where you're just kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that the para sticks against some things, but actually Raichu's stats are just really good in the mm-hmm. format. Uh, having that metal resist is super clutch against AP. Yeah. Um, you're doing that. Um, you're doing the blow up one electrode force the difficult seven prize game against a bunch of decks or whatever. Um, so that's really useful. Uh, there's going to be some more awkward matchups in there. I think you don't like the amount of one prize things that potentially seem okay. Like yeah, um, Baby Blounds and uh, the new Whimsicott deck seem like difficult for you just because you're only able to deny prizes for so long. Um, and you don't play like as much healing as like a Luke Metal potentially would. Hmm. Um, but I think it's fine. I, I think it's a solid deck. I would put it like around tier two probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're still worried about some fighting types being around. Um, and I do think your engine still has a little bit of work to do, at least in the early turns. And you are still a little bit concerned about crushing hammers, even though you're playing Electrode. It's more sort of like it puts you all in on if they boss his orders and like hammer your benched one, you're like really sad. So yeah, I think there are some, there are some flaws there. There'll possibly be turns where you're just like, stamped down yourself and then you're not able to switch your right you out of the way and you're forced into lightning ride when you don't really want to like a couple things that are a little bit annoying yeah um, but i think it's solidly tier two i think it i think it's a very fine choice for the format yeah yeah i'm actually a big fan so deck i haven't really played a lot of yet but it is one on my horizon to do as well so i'm actually quite excited for that to be fair Mm-hmm. I am quite excited for that. Right, what am I not excited for? I, I like to go, you know, from highs to lows here. So you keep 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 everyone guessing. What am I not excited for? Okay, maybe not excited for this next deck is wrong, but I'm not sold as what I've seen a lot of other people are. Again, go back to this ADP video. Some people threw Charizard Leon at me. And I'm just not convinced, Joe. Stage two welder. I tell you what, stage twos are hard enough. Imagine trying to play welder as your supporter. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's strong. I have lost to it a couple of times on TCJ, but I've also beat it a lot of times when I really shouldn't have. I think I beat it with uh, what did I beat it with the other day? Rillaboom. I didn't even farm a weak guard for a while. So come on, Joe. What do we feel about um, Charizard? Yeah, I don't think it's high tier. Um... I would be looking around that 2.53 range. I think it's probably the best budget deck out there for new players. Um, but it is, like you say, it's a stage two. Your supporter isn't getting you a lot of draw on certain turns. There's fragility there for sure. Your late game is super powerful. Yeah. But from what I've seen, from what I've seen, Battle Sense kills like a bunch of random Charmanders and rare candies all the mm. time as well. So yep. um, you end up being a like a 12 card deck pretty quick and it's like yeah. it's down to really like what hasn't been binned by battle sense and mm. whether that's enough for you to still win the game and i don't think you really have the space to play like random pal pad or random like you know like more than two ordinary rods and stuff like that and obviously yeah. there's no way to get back rare candies so like all stage two decks there are fragile turns your early game you're really hoping to get that candy combo off uh, yeah. because that's going to draw you more cards and hopefully keep you afloat but if you candy charizard and that charizard like immediately dies yeah you can be scrabbling around for a bit so i think that's a low-key problem and pricing leon can be a problem for damage yeah. output yeah, especially yeah. into v maxes so there's a ton of things that keep it like in the low tier but i think it's like a really really good beginner deck and i yes. think that's where yeah. it will stay uh, but I think it teaches pl- new players as well, like a lot about the game. Yeah. So I'm really, ha- I'm really happy to see the card, hmm. and that it's going to be relatively cheap uh, to build and play, and it, it like does so much for new players. So I'm, yeah. Even though I don't think it's got huge, like a lot of legs, I think it's a great like entry point to the game mm-hmm. for people. So I really respect that. <laughs> Funny you said that. Cause I, remember I was playing it because uh, I, you know, chat against one of my videos. Did a girl from choose my deck for me, Joe? And she picked the battle sense child. I was like, okay, and I'm playing. And I'm thinking, well, I have to sequence really well here to like. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it I was having, you a yeah, lot, right? It was. Yeah. I was like, okay, so if I want to get this Leon the battle sense, what do I do to make sure that more likely? Da, 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 da. Oh, look, there it goes. So yeah, no, it is quite good. And I feel, especially for a new player, how rewarding is going to be getting that Leon, getting that uh, three hundred. They're gonna be like, yes, on top of the world, baby. Uh, it is satisfying when it works, but um, mm-hmm. you know, if you'd want to try and take down your hexes or whatever, I might say to play something else. So that being said, we say two point five for this one was that two point five is possibly yeah. generous, but I think you could make an argument for it to sit there. Yeah, yeah, no fun little fun little deck, fun little card, but um, 
Yeah, I, I don't like stage two. I've always said with stage twos, for stage twos for, to be really good or playable, once that stage two come out, you have to have immediate, number one, try and stay on the board as long as possible, number immediate damage, value, all that good stuff. Guard of RGX, that came down, you're not immediately clearing it out of the way, and it's throwing down big damage, energy's hitting the board. Vicar Bulu, Vicar Vot comes out, bang, energy, 180 damage, or 210 with choice ban. These are immediate cards. It, like, and like Joe said, if you get out of that Charizard, and you do a little 200, that's nice. If that Charizard goes down, what are you doing? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? You can't be having to get this candy combo off twice. Like, come on. So, yeah, um, yeah so... Uh, I'm not really a fan of stage twos anyway, to be fair. So let's keep it moving. <laughs> Here's a stage two I actually don't mind too much. I'm just conflicting myself straight away. But Rillaboom. <laughs> Rillaboom's fun. Now, I've got a little story to tell about Rillaboom, Joe. Um, uh, my first initial draft of a Rillaboom VMAX Zarud S Grass Box deck, I tried uh, Snorlax. And let me tell you, that did not work. Snorlax Rare Candy. Didn't work. So, I went, so, so, so then I went back to Egg Rar, gave it. And I actually... I had some fun. I was winning some games. Eggwell's really cool, you know. Rillaboom V actually was that rude. You can heal off a lot of stuff. Um, Tropical Hours was always an insane jet I could get off at the right time. Um... Do you feel as if Zarud is, uh, well, and, uh, number one, an include even worth playing? And then number two, if it changes the needle, if this format has changed a little bit for Rillaboom, if it's, is it better, is it worse? What do you feel? Uh, so I think... Without Zarud, the deck had no win condition. To be perfectly honest with you, so I think oh, wow. Zarud is. I think the Zarud is mandatory, and I think Zarud is amazing for the deck. It doesn't change its inherent weakness, and well, like its typing weakness, yep. and the fact that you are leveraging turns at times to just build up into your Riddle Boom and try and make the the big V Max sometimes. So it plays strange tempo wise. There's there's a few issues in that. Um, Grass is heavily resisted right now in the format, yeah. as well as being hit for weakness. So its typing is like a huge shame for it. So I don't mm. think it will climb the tier list massively because I can foresee... I mean, there's basically no reason not to be playing a welder deck in the format right now. Like, <laughs> Center Scorch and Blounds seem so well-placed, um, apart from like the Inteleon matchup. And even then, Blounds can still win that. Yeah. Um, so that makes me kind of concerned for Rillaboom still. So I wouldn't put it much higher, but my respect for it has gone up. Like before, I literally thought like you're playing a high roll deck and you still don't really have a big win condition. Yeah. And now Zarud actually makes me think like, oh, okay, you tank with Rillaboom V Max after doing 280, then Zarud comes in, gets you essentially like buys you back a turn yep. by healing your big man, setting up for game for the following turn, whilst also taking like finishing off the thing that you were trying to kill the previous turn. So like mm. Zarud is like the perfect like turn four play, and that's what yeah. instantly win. Like that's what makes people scoop. If you can heal a V Max and even get one energy on it, that's yep. perfect because yep. then you can just go um, voltage beat attach yep. win. So um, yeah, the, the Zarud is amazing for the deck, but the deck's still not that good. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't, I can't see it going above two point five. That's yeah. kind of where I would see it. But I'm not just gonna laugh in the face of it when I see it now because I know I have to be careful of like power spike turns that are. Mm -hmm. Uh, out there for the deck now yeah like now he said uh, now that Zarud is so good for it like a lot because a lot of Egra didn't even play the 1-1 one, one really bit more like, yeah I didn't even play it and I'm thinking if you're gonna do 1-1 one, 150 a turn mate I'm fine but now like that yeah. Rillaboom that is scary if they just have a Rillaboom V on a bench of one edge you're like oh <laughs> they, can, they can pop out some big damage at any time you know what I mean so yeah. um Tropical Hour was still naughty as well like I love that GX attack um, and really, um, Zarud is perfect. I love it. I love it when I get when I come into a deck and Joe thinks it's good as well. Like, I let me like, no, I was onto something. <laughs> yeah, Zarud is good. Uh, that little hundred poke is so important as well, fans. Yeah, it's so, vital. That a hundred, yeah. it's not. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. But yeah, as much as I'm a big fan, I think two point five is safe for now. Um, <clears throat> You do you run to colossal though. That's quite fun. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> you send that to the uh, shadow realm. Let me tell you. Right, uh, let's keep moving to another deck that I actually really like. I've actually played in a long time though. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's days are numbered, Joe. You know, I love me some greens decks, uh, and Guard Chomp's one of my favorite Pokemon. So is Giratina. Uh, so you could have seen how happy I was when this deck got first got put on the map. I haven't played it in a while. I'll tell you the reason why I stopped playing it. Everyone playing these hammers stressed me out too much. Couldn't couldn't handle it anymore. So I don't play it anymore. Uh, is there anything in the format, Joe, to warrant playing uh, Giratina Guard Chomp? Um, I'm not so sure about. 
it being the best greens variant anymore. I think yeah. green senti or greens choo choo makes a little bit more sense to me uh, now. Um, one cool thing for the card itself is potentially all beetle is a way now that oh, you can get more spread yeah. around the board for calamitous slash, uh, which is potentially cool. Um, I don't see much else from the new set that changes anything. Mm. Um, the no, Leon doesn't help too much either. It depends how much spread you put on things, but yeah. I don't think you ever have the time to use that anyways. But um, yeah, I don't think there's... like I would definitely be playing other greens decks uh, in, instead of Tina Chomp now. Um, but maybe there's some experimentation with Orbital VMAX. Yeah, that's fair. I just felt it was so efficient. And I think as the HP starts getting higher and higher as well, like... Like hit, hitting 280 with a uh, charm ain't too hard. Like you need to go net scoop up or you know some Roxy. But when you haven't started doing clamor attack multiple times and like you look at the and you look at this board now, decks we've got here. Like they, you, if your if your um chomp goes down in one turn, like you know what I mean? energy acceleration is a problem for this deck as well. So um, fun to play. You lose to hammers though if they flip heads, and that's what put me off it the most. To be fair, and now that peak one plays for the damn things, could be a problem. So, hammers are still good. Yeah, yeah like so nothing would drive me insane. I would be livid in my chair when someone flipped heads who I'm playing this deck. You can't be having it. I even put bead in a couple of times. Like, nah, I ain't having this anymore. <laughs> right. So with that being said, I think um, I'm thinking tier three. I don't think it's that good anymore. I really don't. Like, I kind of just think there are better greens plays out there. So I would put it in the lowest tier because, like, you could oh, be playing wow. any any other one, personally. <sighs> oh, can I? Can I? <laughs> oh. that's, cause, that's just because I think it's outclassed. In, yeah, no, no, in I do what see it, what you mean. What it yeah, can yeah, do, yeah, yeah, it can yeah. be outclassed by a lot yeah. of things. Yeah, you just got no reason to play it. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Okay. It's sad, but probably true. Right. Here's another deck, Joe. Now, a lot, everyone was saying... Uh, when I was doing my early profiles, oh, when you're doing Arrow Scooter, when you're doing, what's it, Cramran, I'm thinking, am I missing something here? Do you actually think this deck's going to be good? Like, so, I haven't touched it with a barge pole. I don't know, I don't know you have, Joe. So, I uh, think, have you played some games of it? How do you feel it actually goes? I ain't touching that thing. Oh, I ain't doing it. Yeah, it's probably the best approach. It's a meme, <laughs> for sure. Yes. <laughs> They're like, why do you want you playing it, Shane? Why do you think it's good? Like, I played this game for a decent amount of time and <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe if DC was still in for or even Rescue Stretcher, anything along these lines. If you rely on a supporter that doesn't draw you cards to get your Pokemon back and you have to attach a special energy to attack again, nah, that's you're mad if you think I'm wasting my time on that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that's straight in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even worrying yeah, I'm not even I giving agree. that the time of day. Yeah. Right, now here's a here's a big boy brain deck. Um Electric Mewtwo Joe. This just on the tail end of Vivid. Uh, took some tournaments by storm. It's popping up all over the shop. Um, you know, had that had the Galarian Farfetch now as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. How has that been going? How is that? Does that progress forward really well? So I haven't uh, played much with it, but I, I like the fact that you can be playing um, Mewtwo's. Like I think Mewtwo could be creeping into regular Picarom anyway, just so you have a fighting chance against the fighting decks. Yeah. Um, so I like that approach. I like. Uh, I, I feel this is a better way to accelerate than Welder Mewtwo now, actually. Oh. Uh, Welder Mewtwo has the benefit of its typing still, which will probably keep it a relevant deck. Yeah. But the, but the uh, Lightning Mewtwo, is, is, it's more than Lightning because it also plays, yeah, like you said, no, the Farfetch'd. It plays like Milotic sometimes. Mm. It plays Vileplume. Which, I mean, you can't attack with Vileplume, but it, it has like a toolbox of attackers. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that toolbox may be slightly tweaked, but I think the consistency that we know that Getting full bits off early is super good. Having electrified to fall back on, having some uh, very neat plays available to you, even having um, your healing effects uh, yeah, with actually the new itself yeah, can be yeah. really huge. That's caught me before. Yeah, yeah so uh, I think there's a lot of maneuverability there. I'm a little concerned about Whimsicott as a matchup. Even if you're trying to attack with like the Picaroms, they still die to a Whimsicott in one hit. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit worried about just starting with the wrong thing in like fighting matchups and they can take some easy like three prize knockouts which is a pain um, but I think otherwise it was like it was an anti-meta pick for the Players Cup 2 mm -hmm. and I don't foresee 
the meta changing like drastically so yeah. i think it could still be fine so i kind of have it in the 1.5 range yeah like probably my favorite Mewtwo variant, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement for sure. See, it's such a good deck. Such just and when you see it doing so well as well, um, I say you know onto a winner. Pretty cool deck. I'm awful playing Mewtwo decks though. My brain can't comprehend putting stuff in the discard part and attacking with them. I'm just oh, oh dear, I'm a big dum dum man. Right, let's keep it moving. <clears throat> So, uh, we must have stayed with the world, uh, the other Mewtwo deck. To be fair, Welder Mewtwo. Now that's one deck I tried to learn. There, were, there was a point in time. Uh, before Vivid Voltage, where World of Mutual was a really good meta call. Um, now, I, now I don't think it is. But um, is there can World of Mewtwo come back? Do you think, Joe? Uh, it, it feels so weak to me. Like ever since we lost Solgaleo, I always felt that Mewtwo was like pretty all in on a lot of turns. Yeah. And I, 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 it's at the point where I just think there are better Welder decks now. I think I'd easily rather prefer to play Senti. Yeah. Um, or even Baby Blounds, or even like a uh, Welder Box kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, I think Welder Mewtwo is dropping the tier list mm. just by the, by virtue of a people not playing it. Uh, also, Whimsicott as a potential new bad matchup. I keep mentioning Whimsicott, and I believe it's going to be yeah, relevant sure. enough to actually be a like a thing. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I think it gets a little bit worse, and it's continually getting slightly power crept each time Just by more maxes and stuff Just, like that and yeah random spread decks can put in mimic you if they want to you know like yeah. if it ever becomes that popular inteleon used to play mimic you like it used to main one copy and it could do again so those are all headaches for it so i'd put it around like 2.5 probably yeah i think two point. Like you will still win some games but yeah it's just yeah for sure just creeping away from you too isn't it just 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 creeping away <laughs> yeah um right here's now okay right let's I'll, i've been holding off getting to this deck for a while but now i'm gonna jump in right i've been loving joe porygon z to the utmost degree recently if recycle energy wasn't bugged on tc Joe right now there could be about three porygon z video decks on my video i'm not gonna lie to you but luckily for you people on the ladder and your bench to denies and stuff it is glitched right now so you're lucky um so, I saw a pretty cool Japanese list. <clears throat> Kwan Ram V, uh, Porygon Z, and you played, uh, was it Naga Guz with some Auroras. She so just bench snipe twice, do the GX, take two prizes, job done. Um, and the uh, limited success because Recycle Energy was glitched when I played it. So, But even with that being said, even just like a Porygon Z basic box, I've been trying as well. Kwan Ram, Dub Wall, you can throw a Salamance in there if you like. Um, Obviously, all hinging around Karma being able to just eject bench sitters or even two shot stuff with long view. Um, how do you feel a Karma V esque style attacker deck could go? Oh, uh, I mean, if it was good, why wasn't it a thing before? Like, telescopic sight means you can get crowbats now, but yeah. that's not a huge. Is, is like that the only thing? I guess you can two shot V Max on the bench as well. You, okay, do you play like Fion or something like that to keep yeah, pushing? Yeah, I, I had a Fion, yeah, yeah, so you can... Okay, have... okay, interesting. Um, I mean, it's still a stage two, and you still need to dig out a bunch of energy cards. You have Beat Catch to fall back on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Lightning Weakness isn't irrelevant either, because no. there's, still, there's still Mewtwo Pika, there's still regular Pika, there's potentially Choo Choo. Um, so I think that's a small concern. Um, Cramorant's a super good card though so I could see it being like okay it's a stage 2 so my default is to think no higher than 2.5 but okay. <laughs> I, could... I mean I mean, I, I can respect Cramorant's strength and the telescopic sight is a super good card so yeah I'm a big fan I think even much as I love Porygon Z and Cramorant I, I'm looking at, look, look at how this is shaping up so if I cannot confidently say that, that that deck is good as Colossal or, you know, right you, right you. I think I would be hyping you up if I was. <laughs> so, honest to myself. Um, I'm going to put it right there. But I tell you, Borogonzi, I love you, baby. I love you. <laughs> tell you what, what do you... That's a quick side note, Joe. How do you feel about in stage two decks playing four Opal? Oof. Uh... I would just say no to that. Would you? <laughs> I, 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 know, I know that Marnie is, like, really bad and research can be bad as well, but I'd probably just, like, play Oranguru and still, like, research away as much as possible and just try and Stellar Wish a bunch and commit to Scoop Up Nets. I think that'll be 
more realistic than opaling because you already like insta lose in a lot of situations and it's not like i know there was vika bulu that sometimes played order pads i think there was like a high roll oh. list of that at one point but yeah, i think yeah. most i think most stage two decks never really tried to play those sorts of coin flip high rolls and order pad was way better than opal like don't get it twisted <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and even then it was super fringe but like if if you opal and even if you just get one outcome with opal sometimes that just not even good enough like stay two decks start playing skylar and opal is basically oftentimes searching both of those outs so when your average outcome is the same as skylar that isn't seeing any play in any stage two deck i don't know why you'd like take risks <laughs> i don't know what deck it is but i've got a deck online i was doing it earlier four opal and two skylar <laughs> oh <laughs> joe just turning <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh what deck was gonna really annoy me it'll come back to me later on in the video but <laughs> just the six slots there <laughs> i was like i can't play more than four opal so i'll play the next best thing <laughs> that's gonna really annoy me. i mean it might have been Porygon. i don't think it will it'll come back to me soon though um all right, Porygon, we took Kate. Okay, right now, speaking of Porygon, when I showed Joe this tier list, guys, he didn't understand why there was a Drapion in there. And I'm thinking, do you not know what Drapion does with a Porygon, Joe? Let me tell you what it does. So, for four energy, I know what it you does. Do a oh, he does what he does. So, basically, you get, you get rid of two V cycles, paralyze. Like, we've got Raichu Raichu at tier two, Joe, and that does the same thing. I'd argue. That <laughs> Karam, um, not Karamaran, Drapion can do it better or easier. <laughs> you argue that it can do it better and easier. Yeah, you just have to well, put two recycles in the bin and you just put them straight back on. <laughs> I'm stunned. And you can play Karamaran in this deck as well. Karamaran's just there chilling. <laughs> but is good because it tanks a Zacian and then a drapion they just play a switch take three prizes, yeah. play a switch and take three prizes and shake your hand even if you did high roll a candy and four energy <laughs> yeah like, but Dra you're jumping for about eight <laughs> hoops to do 130 why hey it poisons why? as well Joe. it poisons Ooh. 140 <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're doing so much for no reason <laughs> like literally no reason to do all the things you're doing <laughs> oh dear no you are <laughs> you i was just doing up to try I, and get I'm, not, I'm not even i'm not even gonna begin the <laughs> argument that it's a stage two and it's hard to do all the things you're trying to do i'm just saying the things you're act that the best outcome is embarrassingly weak like, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear like <laughs> what can i say <laughs> I've never heard Joe so animated before. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> we got him in, lads. Is it oh, weak to grass or fighting? Is it weak to grass? <laughs> I actually couldn't tell you to be fair. Oh. I think it's I think it's weak to grass. Oh broken. Yeah, so there you go. You don't you don't have to worry about colossal. You know what I mean? Lock that geezer up. <laughs> <laughs> In that deck that plays two Malolana and a bunch nah, of switch. No, 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 don't worry about that. They'll, you know, <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll find a way around. That's what we do. We find ways around. Oh, no. But in all fairness. Porygon, Porygon on the star, Drapion. Yeah. It's, it's, that's how I'm going to that down for a deck profile. Come to me next week. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Clinigy's bug guy, so I can't, unfortunately. Oh. But, but no, in all fairness, that, um, <clears throat> it's Porygon. I do like Porygon, but when, oh, when no. I... When that's, I way too, that's way too high already. <laughs> that's way too high. Tell you what, what's <laughs> Luke Metal doing? Ain't doing no GX tack now, son. You get this. No, I'm joking. <laughs> when I was playing it, this is and this is how, no, all jokes aside, this is how I know this deck was bad. When I was playing, I ended up using Crime Ramp more anyway. I was like, hang on. I might as well just <laughs> kick this geezer out, get these Auroras out. Let's just try and go down a basic... Um, Crime around the wall type decks. I know it's not very good, but uh, you might get some like highlight reels where you can just lock someone up, turn and turn and turn. But you know, there's, you there are. is a lot of switching going about <laughs> at the minute. So, again, I couldn't really, in good faith, tell you it's good in the same way I couldn't do that with the baby Crime Rant either. So, we'll keep it moving. Right. Here's an interesting deck, Joe. Now, I watched your uh, OPOP League Roundup video. Go check that out, guys, if you haven't seen it already. Um, and I was quite sad that I saw one of my favourite decks have one of the lowest win rates. And I know full well I <laughs> was part of that too. <laughs> We're talking about Torkoal. I think it had like a 20 not, 29 win rate. 
And oh, I just love, I do actually love Torkoal to bits. If I could pick a Pokemon we'd have to have as a pet, Torkoal would be up there. He's such a little cute geezer, knocking off two energies fun. You know, if all I'm going to do some 180 plays out of nowhere. I do enjoy playing the deck a lot. So why is it winning? Why is it not winning? Why is it, what's going on? I think it just doesn't do enough, to be honest. Um... I think it's okay in a welder box as like a as a one, but I think it, it's just too limited at what it does. I don't think it's destructive enough to enough archetypes. Mm. Um, yes, it's fire type, and yes, energy removal is good against like a good amount of decks, but not enough for it to be super strong. It's still expensive with, four, with a four energy attack cost. Like a lot of the time, people are adding in like Reshizard into Baby Blown, and if you just compare. Reshizard to like a Torkoal for a similar attack cost, you're getting so much more value and threatening 300 if it's not dealt with with more hit points. And yeah, that just seems like way better. So I think Torkoal is fine as like a one of in a multiple prize welder box, but I don't think I'd completely build around him. I don't think the special fire energy and the uh, the toughness cape are good enough when Scrapper's already being played a bit. There's yeah. potentially more reason to play Scrapper with potentially more Luke Metal, and now there's Telescopic Sight around. So, yeah, for sure. Um, I think there's more reason to play Scrapper, even though I'm still like kind of against the card. <laughs> just, just personally, I know I'll see Scrappers more often. Um, and uh, yeah, just in general, the Special Fire has anti synergy with Welder, and it makes you brick more and, and all that sort of stuff. Pillar too, I learned that the hard way. Yep. Yep, yep, true, true. So annoying. Um, I would have won a game on the OPOP League with that. <laughs> Blind. Oh, no. Twice, twice, Joe, twice. Two consecutive turns. I was like, I, my hand was dead because I'm playing well. Like, I hate world of person anyway. But my hand was dead. Oh, blind combustion pillar. Special fire. I'm like, oh, that doesn't count. I would have got a KO. Next turn, the same thing. Oh, come on. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. Um... It's still a well the deck though, and there's still some stuff there. So I, I mean, two point five three. Yeah, I'm I think. pretty okay with that. I think I would have put it in two point five, but after seeing the results in European League staring me in the face, it, the worst win percent. I can't, in my good, honest heart, guys, oh. put it higher. I couldn't believe it. I know. I think I played it three times, and I won maybe once or twice. I'm not sure, but. Um... Yeah, some of those were greens and some of them weren't. I quickly learned that greens was uh, that was a bit adventurous. Not gonna, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> I really don't want to put down the NAs against ADP. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Now here's a deck, Joe. I've actually just finished editing up, and it will go up tomorrow on my channel, I believe. Um, quad Aegis Slash. Uh, v Max, mm. actually super fun. Now, actually, full uh, um, what's the word? Full honesty and transparency. Uh, I said at the start of the video as well, I did not change a card from your list. That list is fire. I could not think of any reason to change it. So, if you want to know, I'll leave it in the description. A full, uh, perfect 60. Go, go, Joe, go through all the you know possible other cards you can play and why they're there. Go check out that video. Joe is a lot smarter than me. Let's not get it twisted. That deck is super fun and good as well. With that being said, though, Joe, um, how high can we realistically put it up? I like it a lot, to be honest. Um, I think my like it's going to sound like a broken record, but its ADP matchup could <laughs> could be a little bit better, <laughs> um, unfortunately. Um, I think I'd like to put it around the tier two. I, yeah. For me, it's it's yeah. the best Snorlax plus VMAX deck. Yeah. Um, yeah. because it doesn't instantly scoop to things that mm. the other Snorlax plus VMAX deck uh, can do. Like Orbital and Luke Metal, or sorry, Orbital and Colossal both concede into Luke Metal like immediately, yeah. whereas Aegislash actually has a favored Luke Metal, which is huge. Um, your your damage output just gets way, way better. So yeah. you just you just sit with game on board in certain situations, like if your early game's gone well. Like mm -hmm. there's still there's still some concerns about those opening turns. And I like I know you just said it's the perfect 60, but I would say I'm one card away. I I think adding in a Luke Metal is yep. a really big deal because okay. it makes your tag calls more live to give you more outs to have something to attach to on the opening turn, which is yeah. actually a big deal. No, that's fair. Uh, and it means responding responding on a alter creation mm -hmm. uh, means that you no longer have to hit um three energy on age of slash and get it into the active you just need to full metal wall which is like one less saucer but a really big deal yeah um, I see that. 
So I think one Luke Metal in the deck is really is sound, and I think it's good. But yeah, I think it's it's surprising because it was completely off my radar. To be honest, the whole Snorlax, like the quad Snorlax thing was yeah. kind of off my radar anyway. But at the same time, I've never really been a huge greens player. So that's kind of why yeah. I always try and build things first around with like Jirachis and Dedenes and Crobats and see how that works. But uh, Aegis Axe seems to suit the bill like very, very nicely. So I think it, I think it's going to be like a, a fine tier two deck. And if you've played any of the All Beetle or any of the Colossal with the, the Snorlax and Dolls, you'll get the gist real quick. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's very fine. A, a pretty good deck, I think. Yeah, no, I've, I've actually haven't enjoyed playing a deck like in a long time. It suits my playstyle a lot where you're sort of searching, you tag calling, you get the stuff you need, a couple of turns, I have to Marilana now, or mm -hmm. I need to go holler out this now to stop that. Uh, super rewarding in that respect. And once you get that first KO, oh, you can just sit back now, like, oh, I can just hit whatever I want now, boy. Yeah, <laughs> I actually hilariously. Managed... Yeah, go on. So, I was going to say, I actually beat a Charizard Leon, and you can't even one-shot the damn Charizard first. Didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was literally going to say that. Hilariously, I'm 4-0 against Center Scorch. Oh wow! And I, I've even Jesus. beaten I've even beaten two Centies that were playing Giratina. Like that's insane. I don't yeah. even know how that happens, <laughs> but it yeah. has happened with the deck so far, and yeah. that's been super fun. <laughs> yeah, once once you get that first KO, boys and girls, like you are literally like that pressure just ramps like if yeah. that thing could one shot at a dene oh, my, i know right my exactly lord yeah. like, you would be off to the races <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah agreed and equally as well being able to play the metal goggles that's kind of i find that's come up a lot for me not like, all this long view nonsense like nah not today <laughs> none of that today yeah no 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 don't try that yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. it makes Somewhere. a turn otherwise you'd lose a turner as well because they yeah. can either zigzag or they can mm -hmm. uh they can poison you so the goggles are actually like super important, super important. and luke, luke metal luke metal helps that match up as well because you can get rid of two energies and then you're on a better footing against them as well yeah for sure. So I'm actually a big fan. I'll be playing that a lot in my off time. I'm just not 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 playing to record or stream or anything like this. Yeah. I'll, find, I'll find myself playing deck a lot because I feel as if it rewards, you know, careful, methodical play, and that's all I really like that sort of stuff. So yeah, it, big, yeah, big it's really surprised me. So I'm I'm happy I was able to put my name to that deck. I I really yeah. hope it does well. I'm rooting for it. Yeah, no, I'm big big fan of that. Well done there, Jack. Everyone did a good round of applause. Smashed it there, mate. Smashed Every it. now and then. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's keep it moving. Um. Right, Togekiss Joe. Now, it's one of those cards where the potential's there, right? That damage output is really low for my liking, but being able to tutor out two cards at a time is really cool. I think Tor did... Uh, he was playing it on stream the other day. I can't exactly remember what he was playing, but a lot of people have seemed to go down a handlock s kind of route. I've seen Floor just knocking about. I prefer the Jesse James, heavy Jesse James. Like, get those cards straight out of your hand, please, fella. But um, I've also seen Snorlax knocking about now as well, because we've got three retreat cards. You can just weave in some Snorlaxes here and there. Um, without without there being a, like a sort of defined way to take it, Joe, as a whole, where, uh, where are we putting a Togekiss type deck? I'd say pretty low. I don't think Colossal's going to have enough of an impact to actually scare away the Lightning decks, especially the Mewtwo Lightning deck will still be around. So I think you've got some pretty rough L's there. I think you're really sad into Luke Metal again. Um, I think your damage output still needs a lot of work. Um, so I think... I actually think the Green's Break Zard is better than the Togekiss deck if you're going to try and okay. accumulate handlock combos. So I think Togekiss is pretty poor. Wow. So just straight up poor, huh? <laughs> I think it's pretty poor, yeah, to yeah. be honest with you. I feel as if it needed it needed something I was going for it, right? More hit points maybe, been able to attack for one attachment, or even more damage, like I don't know, like if they kind of, you kind of need all of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. but I'm, I'm more of an optimist. If Togus had one more of those, I'd be more excited. Joe needs all three. <laughs> like, you know what I, mean? I just find like if you don't get handlock, and if that Tokus just takes damage at the wrong time, now you have to like Malolana, you don't really want to, or you know, you or if you had energy back, oh my, if you miss an energy. <laughs> Just you might as well hit that can see button straight away because you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> like, yeah, end up playing like one world or one fire. Like, this shouldn't have to come to this, boys. So, <laughs> yeah, no, not a fan. I tried it, but uh, yeah, I'm, I I think, I'm like, thinking. I was thinking, don't oh, to be honest. I don't. Rude. I don't see any point. I honestly don't. 
This could come back to bite me. Oh, what, 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 what were you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need much talking to that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll randomly let... lose to it on ladder as, as the comeuppance, but sure. That's yeah, fine. I'll probably will too, but oh, I, hope, I hope they don't watch that turn this video up. <laughs> you said. <laughs> right, we've mentioned Wimps quite a little bit now, Joe. And I'm not even going to lie. This was a card where I initially saw it and I thought, nah. HP's too high for this to work. But it's been going bonkers. <laughs> like, I've seen it on YouTube everywhere, Twitch everywhere. I even traded for mine. Yeah, I need to get on that quick before they get expensive. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, talk me, how is this, what, what is this doing? Because, like, uh, how does it, I mean I, I mean, I know what it does, right? It does, like, you know, get the new turn boards, like, 160 for one very good. Um, 170, but it's just, yeah, yeah. 170, I should say. Oh, yeah, because it's 10 plus, my bad. Um, so, yeah, how does this, how is this taking everything by Storm Joe? What's going on? <laughs> Uh, well, we just really need one prizes that are decent in the format. That's one of the first things. Yep. Uh, Whimsical with sustainable good damage with potential spike turns of great damage where yep. you can one-shot a Picarom, one-shot a Mewtwo, one-shot Zacian, all big claims, all big stakes yep. to sort of have um, to actually be able to uptrade. Uh, because you play Psychic Energies, you can play Latios. I've also seen some oh, this playing yeah. Heracross as well. Yeah. Um, so it's like the only one prize deck that can realistically compete with ADP, which I think is really huge. Like only Blounds and Whimsy can claim that, and that's why Whimsy is, is a successful one prize deck or will be a successful one prize deck. I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, you also have the natural synergy of playing uh, Island Challenge Amulet, which is kind of huge as well. So uh, you yeah. can get away with the Dene, you can get away with Oracoria, you can get away with like Silvalli potentially as well. I think uh, Azul's latest list plays Silvalli instead of like. Uh, Sincino or Greedon or anything like that. Oh, uh, yeah. But those are all options. Those yeah, are all options. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the amulet actually is like a really, really big deal. Like, yes, it eats into your damage sometimes, um, but making it an actual six prize game is a is a big deal. Um, I think its early game is still quite slow because if you're missing one piece along the way, <laughs> you start getting really slow. Like you, if, basically, the the idea is get as many basics down as possible, and uh, that gives you the options to put tools down, essentially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Biggest fear is stamps and manis, which are kind of like rife in the format. But there are still welder decks out there where you're just free to roam, uh, which is really insane. Mm -hmm. um, I've added in Mimikyu into the deck as well as Mew as like both one of techs. Uh, the Mimikyu to stop um, healing, which is a really big deal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a lot I like about Whimsicott. Um, it's got that sketchy early game which still makes me a little bit nervous but there's so much upside to the deck that i can't i can definitely see it being a contender and what like alongside blounds is the best one prize deck to play wow so that is mighty high praise okay uh, uh, what's funny is most people like we rated it like as if we were looking at it alongside garbador because they were they were yeah. released at the same time mm. from japan and then it was like you thought that they'd be like a combo double stage one deck you, you throw them in the bin and then Garb gets them all back in. But that was like extremely clunky. And if you yeah. just take Whimsicott away and use that as it is, it's just way better. It reminds me of when we saw Luka and Oranguru in the same combo. And then we thought about <laughs> an Oranguru Luka deck. And then we were like, wait, Oranguru is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> ignore, yeah. ignore, the, ignore the thing Pokemon are trying to push. Just play the good part instead. Yeah. 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 That's fair. So with that all being said, I'm, in, I'm intrigued now. How high are you going to put it, Joe? I'd put it 1.5. 1.5. I was intrigued to see if it would crack the ones, and it has. I don't think, I don't, I don't think it can crack the one, because even, like, your ADP can still be sketchy, because you can miss Latios, or you can uh, uh, get tools scrapped on certain turns, and then the um, amulet goes, and they do take those, like, multiple Ooh, prize knockouts, and stuff yeah, like that can happen. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like it's a flawless game plan or whatever, and you can just be, like, short on tools at times. Um, so there are issues there, and you're still trying to grab multiple stage ones and always have your next cottony lined up and all this other stuff so there's still stumbling blocks in every game that you're going to play with whimsicott um but it, again it, its upsides are just so solid yeah and i guess also with the adp isn't like uh mewtwo back in the day where you used the mewtwo to do it right you actually have to fill your bench as well and get yeah, well, active. yeah yeah so so the good news is you play a ton of balls and you play like six to seven switch outs because you okay. play four you turn board and three air balloon normally. oh true yeah of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. actually play like a really high amount of outs so it's like at least comparing it to like malamar that was the other like one yeah. prize deck that played latios you have way better outs than malamar used to mm. and malamar players 
because you know they used like Malamar was heavily played in in an ADP format yep. because they would try and Latios. So Whimsicott doing it is much more reasonable, I think. Okay, well that's good then. So because yeah. that used to hate me because obviously my only experience with Latios is with Malamar, and you're like, oh, right, so I have to I have to research now, and if I don't actually, <laughs> like, you know, what I mean, if I don't hit it, and you don't, you're like, oh, this is my attachment. Yeah. I got a two fives on the board. That really shouldn't be here now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at least at least you, at least you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going, I'm intrigued to play this Whimsicott for sure. Um, yeah, should be fun. Should be fun. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Let's actually talk about um, the big bad nasty. We have left him so far. We mentioned him a lot. Oh, ADP, Joe. Now, is it me or ADP is the most biggest public enemy? No, everyone, everyone is trying the hardest to make their ADP matchup better. Um, me personally, uh, it's my favourite deck in format. It's a shame that it's like, you know, took off the way it had. Because I think ADP is a card. Everyone's going to hate me. I actually love it as a card. It's so interesting doing extra damage for the rest of the game and taking extra prizes. The thing is, I I like it because it makes other attackers like 160 power scooter. <laughs> like, that's why I like it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I feel as if the meta is moving away from ADP, but it's such a well-oiled machine of what it does, and it can cheese games. It has no right to be cheesing sometimes. Um, is that a safe uh, forecast for ADP, Joe, or am I completely missing the border? What, what do you mean by moving away? Like... What are you afraid of now? Like, we've got decks like um, uh, Aegislash, for example. Like, that's just trying to make ADP super hard, right? Like, yeah, I think Colossal Aegislash... to a certain extent as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm still kind of just shrugging and thinking it just got better because Leon's a good card. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, true. And that makes, that makes, <laughs> that makes the Luke Metal better than it was. Um, it means you can go through a choo-choo now as well, which is oh. a big thing that Picaron was hoping wouldn't ever happen. Yeah, that's, <laughs> no, that's fair. I forgot. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, wow. I mean, I would only play one Leon, but I think it's a really good one because you can Elder Goss it. Yeah, you can do it. If you can do it twice into one of those matchups, you're instantly winning, I think. Damn, yeah. Like, I don't think there's anything new from the set that makes me scared to play ADP in any way. I think it is the tier S deck of the format still. Wow. I th yeah. That's mad. How could I forget about Leon? That's crazy. I haven't played it since Vivi Voice. I mean, it's just, it's just like a cheeky one off. No, but yeah, no, that like, solves your problems. You're right. That is... Oh, boy. Yeah, I think, and it, like, embarrassingly, embarrassingly, it even helps mirror because you don't need to boss through the ADP anymore. You can kill it with Zation now, like if they don't have big charm on, and that's like another thing. So, yeah, it's like good in different matchups and mm. potentially good in mirror, and that's like, well, you're definitely worth a space then. That's crazy. That's insane, man. ADP, eh? I love ya. Hate ya. I love ya. <laughs> oh. So, I'm, I'm so sad it went the way it did. Like, <laughs> like what, what does do that you mean? mean? Like, it's doing fine. No, 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 no. Not ADPZ. No, I like ADP, not ADPZ. That's too good. Like, <laughs> that's too good. I liked it. Oh, I liked man. it when ADP was that you had to attach one per turn. I feel as if it was fair then. Like, now it's just like. Oh, forget that. Like, every turn, you're just like, well, I'm, I can clip my I'm fingers, way, I can do whatever yeah. I want. <laughs> Like you know, what I mean? <laughs> I'm way beyond fair at this point. Give me ADPZ any day. The most embarrassing thing, the, the worst thing is, it draws through its deck better than almost any other deck in the format as well. So you just yeah. see more cards than That's other it. decks, which makes it better anyway. So. That's it. Like, and when you're playing competitive, there's nothing worse for me, at least in my opinion, where you lose games where you didn't like set up or anything. ADP always, you always do what you want, and oh yeah, no, it's just so effective and it's a well old machine and yeah. yeah. Even if you break, you have the bailout cards of like fine. At least I like can energy switch next turn. Yeah, and that's all that sort of stuff. So it's like yeah, mm, you got more. You get cheeky more. <laughs> I love me a cheeky more while. Let me tell more while is cheesy as hell. Uh, the me. good news is the good news is I think most people will go down to one more while now because I think there's yeah. probably a little bit less Eternatus, mm. but we'll see. We'll see. More while is just so cheesy that it's good in a ton of matchups anyways. Yeah, I love that. Oh, did you care my uh, ADP after ejected you? Right, ping. There you go. There's two NAs down on your board. You ain't drawing no cards for the rest of the game. Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Oh, dear. Good, good. I love it. Well, we all know we all know what Shay's playing in the OPOP League. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> right, let's keep it moving. <clears throat> to another Zacian deck, Joe. Um, 
I've put I've got turbosation here. Um turbosation, you know, just more, you know, turbo patch focus. I've quite liked it with Barnett. Um I don't know if it's like super addictive to high tier, but it does give you some funny turns against VMAX deck, let me tell you. Um how do you feel as if a turbosation esque without the ADP? Um I like that it has coating now, so yep. it can try and attempt to trade against some of the welded based decks that you couldn't really do before. Mm-hmm. Zamazent is a very strong card in the format for yeah. sure. So I like playing like a double doggo style deck. I I think even without like a tackle package, I'd still want to weave in like one Luke Metal just to have a GX attack option. Yep. Um I still think you're kind of bad into ADP. <laughs> yeah. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't, um, I don't see how you, you beat that. <laughs> uh like it feels like you need to be able to boss Brave Blade on the turn that they GX in case there's any energies on Zacian coming out from them. Mm-hmm. Or, you, or you need to Luke Metal on their ADP and just be like, basically be a more aggressive Luke Metal deck and actually have a draw engine behind you rather than like sitting behind dolls and intrepid sorting. But I don't think that's that bad. I don't really like uh, the the Bayonet. I thought I was going to, but it doesn't help enough matchups, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but I think it's like fairly well-rounded i think it's like a tier two deck i would play the other two zation decks first yeah no yeah but i still think i mean you're still playing some of the best cards in the game uh with a ton of support and consistency behind you so i'm not going to question anyone playing that sort of approach uh, zation is just so good like you can take away the best card in the game adp and it's still you know what I mean? zation is just nuts man <laughs> like there were some mm-hmm. games i was filming for the bennett profile where but I didn't even need to make an appearance. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I put Babe Late, Babe Late, Babe Having the four turbo patch just unlocks bonkers things. Like, just <laughs> not, and having the full Jirachi package as well. Like, whoo, well, we are, yeah. we are, whoa, we are flying. <laughs> like, let me tell you. <laughs> like, yeah, it was super fun to play. I feel as if that deck, as much as I like it, Give it, give it the format time to move on. And there's not a tag teams knocking about. Everyone's a V Max North L. All right, here we go, lads. So, nice. yeah, that, that's why I sit with that. Um, now here's another deck, Joe. This one that recently t- kicking off. I see it getting results everywhere. I don't know what happened, Lapras, Joe. What's, what's, what's all this Lapras nonsense? What's happened here? I think it's probably just boredom from players. <laughs> <laughs> At least I wasn't the only one that was player confused. Like, what? I think I, I think you can... I, I mean, I don't even know. No. Yeah, it sounds pretty high roll. It sounds worse than Inteleon to me, for sure. That's it. That's what I was thinking. Because I remember I was watching an OPOP game. It might have been Jack versus Table oh, Mon, I oh, think. Oh, don't, don't it... say it out loud. Yeah, he got nine energies in yeah. a turn. And I'm thinking, if that's what this deck needs to do, like, I, I mean, I, was it was it Jack on the receiving end of that? or? Unfortunately, yes, it yeah. was. And yeah. I'm thinking, how often does that happen? Honestly, like, that can't happen that often. Oh, man. Like, we, we, was, we, we couldn't put Inteleon in one... And that needs six less energy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> six less. You, you can set up three Inteleons than what you do for that lap for us. Oh, my Lord. So, yeah, I think boredom and meme, and if you're, meme that's turns. The thing. Yeah. If, you're look, if you're looking to high roll, Darn Manitan probably has a better win con as well than Lapras. So it's not even like, it's not even the high roll Frostmoth. It's now just like, <laughs> That random middle ground, not good in either camp kind of build. <laughs> That's a good point. We'll go into the Darmanitan next, but yeah, if you want to like cheese and play a bit more riskier, Darmanitan VMAX is that boy. If you just, <laughs> you, need, you need two Galarian Darmanitan VMAX to do your lap for turn. Whew, yeah, no, I didn't, I never see it. Um, so I think if we're going by this logic, then I mean, we, we put a. Uh, uh, Garchomp in the in the bottom, so it's gonna have to go down there, right? Like I think it's good logic, yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be, gotta. Uh, so we mentioned um, Darmanitan V Max. Now uh, I don't think I've ever been so excited playing a deck than what I was playing. I don't know what came over me that day, but I was l- <laughs> that deck is so much fun. <laughs> like <laughs> not only like I think I said it in the video a little bit, Pokemon are normally really picky with their spread, right? It's always like Reason can only hit basics for invisibility, for example. Or you got rubbish like Amphros or Mega Galade where they have to have damage on raid. Like what's all this about? <laughs> Galarian Diamantan V Max has no stipulations. Like, if it's on the bench, it's taking for if it's a V, you're taking 60 with a with a long view scope. That 
that adds up ridiculously fast. Obviously, it's a VMAX, so it doesn't really go down in one shot unless you're hitting it, unless you're playing against Zation. That's a bit of a worry. Don't get me wrong now. Don't worry about that for now, though. But um, two shot and you're active as well. The big downside is these four energy, though, Joe. And uh, with that drawback in mind, uh, how realistically high can we place it? I mean, I, I think one energy is relatively negligible compared to Inteleon, but it's the weakness that makes mm. me want to put it, like tier three to be honest but yeah. holy is that fun like that is a cool <laughs> deck and you can win in like two turns if you're completely high rolling your dumb manatan into into sand slash as well like yeah what a what a dream as well <laughs> like people's eyes widen when you see a sand shrew get dropped down yeah. <laughs> like, and they're like, oh. oh no <laughs> yeah that's so much fun man uh but yeah it's it's pretty high roll uh, so Inteleon is safer for sure. <laughs> yeah I've seen some I think Gyro Sean shout out to you he might have done a hybrid list do you feel as if there's any reason to go down that route or would you just you know if you want to go meme we'll go uh, G-Darm if you want to go serious go Inteleon is there any reason to hybridise the two so hybrid hybrid Inteleon and Darmanitan yeah so I, I, don't, I haven't watched this they're not going to lie but I think it was like a uh, either a free two uh, of each or like a 2-2 two, two on the g Darm and then a 3-2 on the Inteleon something like that I mean it's going to eat into your spaces um, but there's some sound theory there that like it can make Inteleon sniping better it can like you make the most out of the random spread of a Darmanitan by yeah. going with Inteleon and the 200 compared to 160 is a big deal when you're hitting yeah. into like a Turnitus for example so and then you can you can type coverage each other so it's not the worst idea I think it's fine yeah. But it is more. It is eating into your spaces. Yeah. Could you imagine that playing against a turner? So G Dom with a long view. Oh boy. Ooh. You. Yeah, exactly. You better not put a crowbat down, sir. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> don't even think about that. Oh, imagine yeah. that. Yeah, crowbat into the a sand slash. Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's when you give him the old wave. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. I tell you, if I matched. And I turn it as that day when I was for a whole boy. <laughs> I would have been jumping out my chair. Right. Uh, so that being said, um, well, where have we got? We've got Inteleon at 1.5. I think it's weakness. Oh, it's it's tough. weakness yeah, has the to weakness. put it at a three yeah. for me, I think. Like, uh, if you're realistically shame. thinking of, if you're realistically playing this in a tournament and you're hoping not to see a Zation, I mean, <laughs> come on. Come on now. Let's be honest with ourselves. You will see a Zation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't want to see the best, uh, best especially, attack game, Especially yeah. if you start winning. <laughs> That's when you'll start seeing Zations. <laughs> Maybe it is anymore these ban ADP event. Well, to be fair, Luke Meltz will knock about, I guess, in that scenario. But maybe this could be your best uh, ban ADP event deck. Who knows? Um, right, let's keep it moving. Picarom, Joe. I don't understand how this deck still manages to stay about. And it's gone from a deck. I used to like seeing it on a lad. I think I used to be an easy one. So now because they play four hammers, it might be an easy one, but it might not be after two hammers. So, um, great. I'm not really a, I'm not really a Picarom player. I never have been, so I'm probably not the best person to talk about this. Joe, I know you've... You know, you played some big one before. How is it? How does it feel now? Does 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 Electrode go into this deck now? I wouldn't play Electrode. No, I think I think your prize map of sacrificing potentially a Bolton and a Picarom into Stamp Choo Choo or Stamp your next Bolton or whatever else still makes the most sense. Um, so I would play it basically as is. Um, you just kind of shrug and say, "I'm a little bit worse into Whimsicott. I don't want to. Well, I don't want to face Whimsicott. I don't want to face Colossal." Hopefully they're just new decks that only see a little bit of spotlight and mm -hmm. aren't played more than like 5% in the tournament that I'm going into. Um, and you hope that there's a small uptick in Inteleon as well. Uh, yep. So it's meta, like it's meta placement actually isn't the reason why it's so good. It's just so good because it's very consistent. Yeah. It can play offensively and defensively. Like mm. sometimes a hammer is going to completely let you steamroll if it hits heads. Yeah. Sometimes you need the hammers to hit heads like against Senti and Eternatus. Um, but at the same time, it's also got stamp paralysis as a late sort of like backdoor into a win as well. So yeah, I think it's still completely fine. I actually don't think it. At first, I thought bye bye Pika, and then I was like, wait a minute, mm. Colossal Colossal's not super popular. Whimsicott is in the limelight right now, but who knows where it's going to end up? Yeah. Um, I I still think Pika Rom is actually a tier one deck. Tier one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I think it it takes like 8% to 10% Colossal to actually see play for people to stop playing Picarom. And I can't foresee that happening quickly. 
Okay, so, yeah. At least at least early meta yeah. where Colossal is not like realistically, how many Colossal have you seen on the ladder so far? Like I've played quite a lot of games and I've seen like maybe like three, four. Yeah, I've only seen like two myself. Yeah. Like maybe it's expensive to get right now. Maybe it's you know, like not just interesting enough compared to like Orbital and other stuff to experiment with. Maybe yep. because there's hype around Whimsicott that people are playing other new decks instead. Mm -hmm. Um and maybe things will sort of tip the scales, but I still think Pika's pretty chill. I think he's good. Yeah, and like you said, being able to be so like multifaceted, and you know, you can tip, pop off, turn two and three, and just steamroll, or if you fall behind, stamp paralysis. Yeah, it's not. It's not a decks where you can just get over there immediately. Strategy, and okay, now I can just sit back and like, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. do, you do have to play it on this game throughout the whole game. Um, there's not something every deck can say here, to be fair. So yeah, I think yeah, tier one seems quite sensible speaking of another potential well i'm not sure about tier one but it's definitely one of the best decks in format um or most played at the very least center scorch joe now before vivid voltage i was playing a lot of senti nets uh just to try and you know get more proficient with it um do you feel as if senti nets is the best way to play it or i like both i like greens and i like uh just like a ability based build okay. um I think both are completely fine. I think it did very, very well in players to cut two conversion. I think it did I think it outpaced pretty much everything else, uh, in terms of like the big five decks that were played. Oh snap. Um so I think I think Senti did really well for the tournament. I think it was uh kind of low key well placed. I think it's still kind of low key well placed. Um and is just a well rounded, solid deck to be honest with you. So I really like Center Scorch in both ways to play it. I, I'm an ability player more than a greens player because I hate those volatile openings, essentially. That's mm -hmm. like the only thing that makes me really cringe. Um, and I like to always like be in the game. <laughs> so I like That's the ability-based list. Um, but I would 100% put Senti no lower than tier one. I think it's definitely yeah. a tier one deck. And there's no, like, nothing new particularly scares me. Maybe a small uptick in Inteleon, but you can kind of offset that by a potential downturn in Eternatus by a little bit. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it's relatively similar to where it was placed before and seems strong. Yeah, yeah, fun deck to play for sure. Really rewarding deck as well. When I was really getting proficient at the setting, I could feel like I was winning games I wouldn't have won before because I'm getting better. <laughs> it did, it did reward good players. So yeah, I'm a fan of Sunny Nets. We had a little, we had a little out to everything I found with that deck. So a little out to everything. Right, let's have a look. What decks do do not have an out to everything? Uh, here's an interesting one, Joe thinking about it one of the i wouldn't say one of the more hyped cards out of vivid voltage but definitely one that i think most people can agree on in the vacuum that needs a good card dom fan variants it was actually the deck i first started playing when vivid voltage was legal and i was not having a good time joe and i haven't actually played it <laughs> since not gonna lie to you um oh, feels bad. yeah I don't, I don't know what i mean it's caught me in a bad day and then, so then i started playing galamian Gal darmanitan and all of a sudden my day was good again so um Talk to what me a about day. what yeah. a day you had. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a roller coaster day. That one. <laughs> if you haven't seen the Galeria that man's having Vmax video, guys, if you haven't seen it already, go and watch it after this. You'll see exactly what I mean when I was hyped. So, <laughs> um, talk to you about Don Fanjo. I know you've put out a uh, Spirit Tomb deck for a So I was watching the play. I was like, why wasn't it doing this for me? <laughs> so, um, yeah, talk to me. Talk to me about Don Fan. I'm nervous about Don Fan. I think it's got a pretty poor ADP. I think it's vulnerable to healing as well obviously yeah um i don't think it uh, yeah i mean i think it's typing is something you can boast and i do think there'll still be a good amount of peaker on but it's actually still a big perk to the deck yeah but just targeting one thing isn't really enough at the moment so i actually think it's realistically i think it's maybe even worse than excadrill which, which is like a sad thing to say because this is new and shiny and you have some upside with mm. Uh, bopping your own fampies and bopping maybe a, a spirit tomb as well but yeah it doesn't it doesn't have the same draw engine to fall back on because your board space is committed to the things you're trying to damage mm. you can be weak to a uh, tool scrapper as well if you're trying to put toughness gates on spirit tombs which is still a problem for you yep um and essentially your adp is expected to be pretty rough <laughs> so yeah, so i would put it around the sort of 2.5 category yeah i think that's that's the sort of problem i was running into like 
it's just there's a lot of moving parts. I feel even though you're yeah. stage one attacks for one, you know you need to get your spirit tombs down relatively early for them to be remotely effective. Um, if mm -hmm. they're not, you're trying to evolve every turn for high energy. Not the easiest thing in the world to do, in all honesty. Um, one twenty is it one is one twenty right? Does, does one twenty for one fighting? Yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't two shot your V man. I know it's probably asking a lot for it to two shot your V man, but in an ideal world, that's what you want it to do. And you know if you're falling behind Dojo Cam, but then you're trying to find your stage, your man evolving and. I just found it was a little bit too much moving for me. So I might mm -hmm. go back and revisit it soon. I'm intrigued by Renagrius, but again, that's just adding a whole new piece of the puzzle. They're trying to find special energies on top. So, yeah, they're probably going to take some clever geezers like Joe to find the right way to play it, and then everyone else can play it. But until then, <laughs> I don't think I'm that person, unfortunately. <laughs> um, let's keep it moving. What else have we got here? Krabby! Joe, come on. You love me. You 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 love some crabby, right? Crabby spread? No. <laughs> no. It's a it's a crabby. So you just you just leave your active Pokemon in the active <laughs> and just attach to that, and then you beat crabby immediately. <laughs> Let's have a think. Is that? Yeah. No. That is. Yeah. No. That 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 works. And it's funny because um when I was I've actually done a video for this right. It's actually my favorite thumbnail. If you haven't seen that thumbnail, it's uh everyone in everyone in a warthog. Go 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 go, go check that thumbnail. You don't have to watch the video if you don't want to, but at least look at the thumbnail. Work of art that one. Let me tell you. But uh, I was when I was playing it, I'm thinking, why are people putting down stuff like on this? Like what are you like? Uh, uh, Barrascuda can't even hit that. He hasn't even got the option to hit that. If you literally like just bench, uh, not even uh, just had one active like a clock. What is a clock? We're gonna do against Colossal. Ain't nothing that you can do. But um. You know, if you're playing against people that want to bench stuff, you can have some fun fun turns. Uh, I have to actually try the Alone in the Sand Slash version of Red Blue as well. That's something I want to try as well. But um, I'm going to put a fun maybe for that one because I, I mean, we might not be the best deck to play, but Joe, when you're smiting multiple Denny's and Crobats with a little crabby, yeah, that is a fun thing to do. It is. I'll fun. agree to that. that is, Let's you know, agree with that. Yeah. Little crabby, little crabby. That means crabby's better than Togekiss. Lord. <laughs> I mean, the, the 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 two things with words aren't. Yeah, really that's cute. true. Yeah, yeah. I but guess yeah. if someone wants to look at this, I'm sure I'll get some comments. Like, how dare you? <laughs> that's not even a right available. And yeah, let's keep it moving. <laughs> or or Beetle V. Uh, or Beetle V Max right now. I think there's a lot of hype with this car. I've seen multiple uh, content creators cover this, all this sort of stuff. I've tried it. I think it's absolute garbage, in my opinion. I don't know what... Uh, I mean, maybe because it's such a cool card, cool design. It's doing a cool thing. That attack is garbage. I'm sorry. I mean, you can be like, oh, you can weave in some e beam. Stop it. That's 10 damage. Eternus has 340. What, we've got like 10 of these in a game? I mean, maybe you can, but what, 20 of these to make a difference? Stop it. Joe, I don't, I, you're more, you, you know, you're a cleverer geezer than me. Am I being a bit harsh on Orbi or... I think it's received way more attention than it deserves as well, personally. Yes. Um, it's, it's attack is fine at dealing with threats, but in terms of like the actual prize race, you need to get, it gets super awkward because you can't grinch anything on the bench that you've mm. like set up because yep. it's like, they don't have energies on the things like on the Denes and Crobats. And yeah. <laughs> you'd, you'd really like to take those Just take a uh, to be couple. honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So you have to you have to play like deal with the threats dot deck kind of thing and hope that there are turns where a doll buys you time and mm. stamps buy you time and all these things buy you time. Like the deck is just like give me more time please dot deck because yeah. hopefully these eerie beams eventually rack up and like sometimes they do, but not a whole lot. Yeah. Like when when I first saw it made top eight of that two hundred player tournament, I feel a lot of it is people not knowing what to do against it, obviously. Yeah. Um and just this this one list that just really caught a lot of people off guard and i can't like i don't think the meta is going to particularly warp too much around or beetle or anything like that i think it'll just kind of pale into insignificance eventually <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i i mean they showed us the way with a snorlax doll engine which is really cool and i appreciate that but um i think it should be around like bottom of tier 2 top of tier 2.5 kind of thing i can never put it above Aegislash lash as that approach because yeah oh senti will be playing giratina um which is the most important fire deck i guess um so 
yeah and and, and the best decks like adp and um pika rom and stuff they play high boss count and yeah. elder goss and stuff and that's like your kryptonite uh, kryptonite most of the time so um yeah i don't think it's that strong i think maybe top of tier 2.5 yeah, is a little that's... harsh because it is quite consistent but the bottom okay. of two like is yeah. is kind of okay I'm going to trust your judgment on this because like, I haven't given it time of day. And I don't think I will. I but... mean, my first my first 10 games of the deck were all like hard, hard L's. See, and oh, like, L's. Oh, my Lord. Some, okay. somewhat, somewhat that's getting to grips with the Snorlax engine and how you're trying to play and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But I mean, there's so many weaknesses there. Like even hammers beetle you sometimes and you just feel really yeah. sad. Yeah, uh, missing yeah. energy drops is really sad and you play a low energy count even with Guzhala. Mm -hmm. uh, swells are a huge pain. Um, there's a ton of things that are just pitfalls for the deck, so yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Like, yeah, you see, if you're gonna go down Snorlax route, try Age Slash. I've played that, I'll give that a big whole stamp of approval. Like, <laughs> the thing is with Age Slash, right? When you get going and you take that prize, that like, initial first two prizes, you are set. I don't see a scenario where, as an all beat or player, you're like, right. Ooh, I can sit back now. This game's won. It's just like I don't feel as if you're ever going to get to that point. And like I said, no. I like I like some games to be easy. You and ain't getting worst, easy games yeah. with this. It ain't happening. It's not happening. The worst thing is like pretty much every orbital game you play. There's a turn where you put down a V and say, if they gust this V before I V max, I lose immediately. <laughs> yes. yeah. And it's like, well, I guess they maybe sometimes don't have this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if yeah. they do, you've instantly lost the game. So yeah. whoops. And when the only tier S that plays four gusts, and you know they play catches as well sometimes, you know, like yeah, yeah like I think I don't think I have any decks, maybe apart from one Dragon Pot deck that plays uh, under three bosses. So, <laughs> so and especially if, if you're playing against the Snorlax dolls, you're thinking right, these bosses are important as you're a player, so you know you're gonna hold on to. Them. You ain't researching them away, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of Orbeetle. I love Orbeetle as a Pokemon, and that card looks amazing, but I ain't falling for it. I ain't doing it. You ain't catching me getting excited for that. Like you know, what I mean? I'd happening. be I'd be really surprised if it's early success is sustainable because yeah. it seems very easy to beat its approach right now. Yeah, maybe if the ability was like twenty, maybe that'd be too strong. But that, oh, that... that would be that would be unreal. Yeah, the, C but, the CGY I... GX on the entire board is true. Wild. But I feel as if <laughs> that's where this format is, though. Joe, the Turners has three forty. What is ten? I mean, 10. yeah. Literally, <laughs> I mean, you could just play a Champions Festival if you want to get that. What is ten? Is a very good, is a very good point. Yeah, like yeah. this was good on Flygon. This was ten years ago almost. Like <laughs> HP's doubled since then. One eighty <laughs> was a one shot. Now it's a two shot. Yeah, true. <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> Flygon was called a shout out to Flygon. Okay, um, let's keep it moving. Uh, Flygon. Well, that's not a card in format, but. Dragapult is now Joe. I actually did oh, today. It went up thinking about it. Dragapult Gengar. Now I feel that might not be the most competitive way to play it, but Dragapult as a whole, obviously Rebel Clash format, big boy. Uh, Turnus came on, and then you sort of, I'd say, uh, uh, Dragapult's always been one of those like best if you're a risk taker kind of player. Like, if you don't mind, you know, bobbing and weaving your Turnus, you have decent matchups in a lot of other places. What does scare me though? A lot of these. V Max decks that are seeing now, or Beetle, uh, Aegis Lash to a certain extent. Um, Mallow Lana's going up, so you're gonna have to start playing cards to combat that. Um, with that being said, do you feel that Dragapult has a stable place in the meta? Uh, not a high place in the meta, no, I don't think it's particularly great. I, interestingly, I tried an or Beetle plus Dragapult deck for a little oh, while, okay. yeah, just where you it. play like it, you just, just weave in the beams in between your, your hits. That was pretty fun. Um, just for some extra damage and Dragapult actually like capitalizes on where you're where you're doing those placements. But uh, and you could play spinners and have like a couple grass energies for in certain matchups. Yeah. Um to sort of mix and match. Um but I don't think it's like particularly that great. Like you said, a lot of reason to play Malolana already in the format. Mm. Um you're still really weak into Luke Metal. I mean not just oh, yes, Malolana but well, Zamazenta yeah. uh, and stuff like that. Um it lost a lot to rotation. Uh, it, it got a big hit in terms of consistency. Now you're just yeah. trying to fable, halt people, and be an energy disruption yeah. deck, which is fine against some stuff, but not a huge amount of stuff. So um, even with maybe a small downturn in Eternatus, like we've already we've not put many fighting decks super high. Colossal is like a reasonable deck, but I don't think it's going to be 
um, yeah. very heavily played. So it's not like um, Eternatus is going to be just gone like that. Yeah, yeah, no, um, sure. So Dragapult still dodging. I think it's more so dodging Luke Metal to be honest going forward. But um, you can still be a nice check to potentially like Whimsicott if it gets popular enough. Yeah, um, you're okay. I mean, you also don't like an uptick in a turn in. Um, Center Scorch either. Center Scorch was pretty much as bad as Eternatus, I think. Yeah, no, for the most fair. part. Yeah. So its matchup spread is just kind of meh. It, like the more V Maxes we have, the worse it kind of gets. So I think like 2.5 is where I'd put it because it's relatively yeah. consistent. It can beat some matchups, but there's a lot that I wouldn't feel favored running into. No, uh, you just said if you're scared about Senti and Luke Metal, look where they are. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, dear. And Picarom can flip heads on hammers too. Yeah, you know? that's it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? If they go hammer into a full pitch, you're like, oh boy, okay. Yeah. This game's got a lot more interesting now. <laughs> like, yeah, so super cool. Cool card. I'm a fan, but yeah. I'll just stick to Gengar. I'll love me some Gengar. Right. <clears throat> uh, what there was that I want to sort of talk about. What was it? Now? Oh yeah, Charizard V Max Joe. I went through a phase where I thought this is going to be absolutely bonkers against Leon. Do three thirty, but <laughs> as bonkers I thought it was. I haven't dared to leave it off on TCGO yet. No. <laughs> do you think? Am I wise to leave Charizard V Max uh, in the collection for now, or do you think they could? We could all be missing something here. I think you're very wise not to touch it. I think <laughs> think thinking that you'll have the luxury of playing a Leon <laughs> with a five energy Charizard Vmax. Pretty pretty bold, I think. Bold, pretty maybe. bold. I don't think the damage was the problem with Charizard. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> like like you were still okay just trying to bump into Eternatus for two shots at times, you know. As yeah. long as your deck kind of worked, that wasn't the issue. So, Leon changes nothing other than adds more clunk spaces that aren't draw supporters. So, mm. it's as bad as it ever has been. Uh, I'd like to put it in the bottom tier just to reinstate that fact that Center Scorch is far, true. far better. That's true. <laughs> I remember one time, not in Vivid Voltage, but I think I was playing. Um, I was playing it before. And um, I, I think I was playing against some sort of metal deck. It might have even been uh, Zations with like some... What's the big elephant geezer called? That Pokemon. Paparaja. That's yeah. it. So they have a Zation. I'm thinking, oh, wait, I don't even need to get the five energy. And I look at it like, oh, no, wait, I actually do still. <laughs> You're like, oh, my Lord. So even with weakness, you got to get five energy. And it's just like, yeah, no, it's... I think the, my initial version was like a greens version. So the tier was just like greens, Leons, and Welders. But I actually ain't got around to it. And I think I'd rather just put some... Uh, energy on a center scorch instead <laughs> like it's a lot easier <laughs> so it does it for you yeah exactly <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> sometimes you know what it's like though pre-format everyone gets a bit oh this is good this is insane and then you try I mean, that, in darkness of blaze people were hyping Char some people thought charizard was better than center scorch and my eyes were like wide as anything i was like can you read <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is everyone's getting wide-eyed for Charizard, huh? Like I said, I've, I've got him on TCG. Will I use him? I still don't. I, I don't think I will. Uh, let's get to another Charizard deck. In point. I mentioned it a little bit when we were talking about Togekiss. Uh, Green's Breakzard um, caught a little bit of hype. I say hype, a little bit of play, and it seemed to instantly die off as soon as it came on the scene. Uh, I like Green's decks. I like being able to search cards. I feel that rewards my play style more. Uh, that being said, I don't feel a massively big draw to play this deck. Um, Am I missing something here, Joe? Does it gain some stuff? or? I don't think it gains a huge amount. Uh, possibly you could think about playing Snorlax instead of Greens now, like Snorlax Doll oh, okay. type approach instead as like an alternate. And it means that you're, in theory, weldering more instead as your supporter. Yep. Um, which is maybe okay. And it leans into the stamp somewhat better at times as well. Mm -hmm. um, I still think Green Senti is my favorite way because yeah. i'm still expecting there to be a good amount of stamp and money that are going to be ruining those hand disruption combos and your damage output's still kind of like not great so yeah. um i wouldn't put it like i think it's okay at tier three like maybe if you really want to still play some charizard um i wouldn't put it much above that now, that seems that seems about right to me. And this is coming from a Greens player who loves being able to search cards. <laughs> I'm still not particularly drawn to this one. Uh, I played a little bit. It's rewarding, but 
Yeah, that's just 180. It's just, oh, it's just a bit low. A bit, not very glamorous for four energies. Um, I'll um, I'll stay away. Um, here's another one I've seen someone try to make an argument for, Joe. And I ain't seen it again. I didn't. Again, I have covered it. Uh, I ain't got around to playing the damn thing, no. Pikachu V Max. I just think if Pikarom is in tier one, right? I just don't see a reason to like. I mean, like, let's not get crazy with it here. If you want to play electric, you've got one of the best toolbox decks I've ever seen. I've been playing for a long time. Boundaries Cross, about ten years almost. Pikarom is one of the best like multifaceted decks. I don't see why you want to mess around with that. Am I, is that is that a correct uh, way of looking at it, or am I missing something here with Pikachu? Yeah, you you become a one trick deck. Yeah. For the spaces that Pikachu takes up, and that one trick is probably just worse than Pikachu's <laughs> toolbox of tricks anyway. Yeah. I think uh, so. I'm pretty sure that he's not great. Like in a push, you can play a one one line in a Pika Rom and be a bigger bomb than Raichu Raichu mm -hmm. because. Then you can actually tank a Leon hit from Lacazation, but then again, you could just play Big Charm on your right, you right, you anyways, and do the same thing. But um, yeah, true. yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see a big reason to play Pikachu V Max. I think its damage output isn't even good. Like it's Rillaboom V Max damage, right? It's like ten off that. Yeah, and, like, that damage is embarrassing. <laughs> so... Dynamic ten is important too. That means you can't just eject an ADP as well. Like you know what I mean? Like come on. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Yeah, and you're giving your opponent prizes if you play any electrode as well. That's never a good thing. I don't, don't come at me saying, "Oh, but we're using free prizes." No, it doesn't mean you want to start giving people free cards, like you know what I mean? Because if mm. you ain't got your stamp or your money, they got another card to you know go bonkers with it. Um, I don't even think it's fun. But am I being too harsh? Even thinking about it down here, or I put it on the bottom too. Put it in yeah. the bottom, yeah. And like, I don't even. I've seen people try and play it in Pecon, but then how are you finding it? How are you finding this either? You know what I mean? Like, this is a yeah. lot of problem. A lot of problems. Um, speaking of finding Evos, Joe, uh, Colossal Sandaconda. Now, this, I think, holds a place dear in my heart. Uh, I've played it quite a lot in OPOP League. Uh, <clears throat> might be my favourite fighting deck in former, because Sandaconda doesn't mess about. Um, <laughs> he just, he just, just throws damage around. I'm a fan. Um... Do I, has it got better though? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Joe, Joe, what do you mean? Joe's, Joe is shaking his head violently. <laughs> you know, I found a Sander Conda, Joe. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> little old Sander Conda. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's getting nothing, right? No, uh, no, no, it's getting So, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> where, where am I meant to put this if it hasn't gained anything? And there's Wim's got that can one bop it now. There's da, 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 da. Inteleon that can snipe your stuff more oh. than good. There's a new green deck potentially around in Orbital. No, no. Don't worry about it. Just no, don't. none of those things exist. <laughs> no, <laughs> they just dodge it. <laughs> uh, do you want to put this in three or? <laughs> right. Let me put my objective hat on here for a sec. All right, let's have a look. What have we got here? Tier 3, we've got Tier 2.5. What have we got in Tier 2.5? Can I really put this in the same tier as Villaboom? And I've played Villaboom, and that boy I mean, you, doesn't you can, mess you up can put this. You can put this I don't in think I, the same I, tier if you want to. No, I'm, I'm thinking, honestly, I can't do it. I don't think it's as, I don't think it's worthy. It's just unfortunate. Oh. Maybe Rillaboom is my new Sand Colossal now. I mean, I just, you know what it is? I have a problem with distinguishing decks if I really like the Pokemon. Like, <laughs> like I really like Sandaconda and Colossal. He's done both in playthroughs before. But, um, yeah, I think if you're going to play a Stage 2 Nuke deck, uh, I think Rillaboom is the way to go now, in all honesty. So, um, I'd look more down that if I was you. <clears throat> Sad as Bush, it pains me to say. That's what it's like, some character development. Me two years ago, nah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but now I'm more responsible. Let's keep it moving. <clears throat> I've got um, I've got a, a what's it called a Zamazenta Amazing Rare here, <laughs> and I think where I was going with this, I've seen some lists play um, Trumbeak and a Bay esque engine because on face value, 182 shots everything, and immunity into V Maxes is pretty cool. As it stands now, the VMAXs aren't the be-all, end-all in the format, which is kind of what made me kind of worried about going down a sole Zamazenta Amazing Rare route. Um, am I missing something here, though, Joe? No, I think you're right. I mean, it's an extremely glamorous fighting type. I mean, 
I guess you're better into like Send Scorch V Max than potentially like Colossal would be. You do have the boast of being able to like pop Picaron quite nicely as well. Yep. Um, but you are gonna just have an abysmal time against ADP. You can have an abysmal time against Luke Metal. There's a lot of things that are keeping you at bay. And if you're gonna try and weave in the other uh like Rayquaza or mm-hmm. Raikou or anything like that, they can't be uh bayed onto or bead onto, whatever yeah, the supporter that's... is called. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and just playing that supporter in general as your game plan is pretty bad because we know that uh Ends Resolve never took off. <laughs> and that saw so... an extra card, right? That saw an extra card indeed. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did. It did. So uh yeah, extremely glamorous. I think this is fun. Me. Yeah. I think it's fair. I'd go the same tier as Waikou. I think Waikou's better as well, to be fair. Um, All right. Yeah, I'm a fan, well, of Waikou. I haven't tried Zamazenta yet, but I don't know. It's just like the problem I see with Zamazenta, at least with Waikou, you get the angels on, you're hitting two, 120 in two places. That is going to happen. If you're not playing against the VMAX, though, you're not even getting full value stack anyway. And if they just one shot, you're like, right, we have a lot of digging now, boys. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So I can't. I, I do think Crabby is better. Yeah, we'll stick with that. We'll stick with that. Now, let's get to a, a potentially the best fight in one prize deck, Joe. That takes prizes, at least. Um, Exedrill. Is that still the best fight in deck? And we have got Colossal knocking about in tier two. But before Rota- uh, before Vivid, I would say Exedrill was on a bit of a, what's the word, climb in popularity and results. Um, do we expect this to continue? <laughs> Um, well, it seems to trump Dom Fan yep. and any other fighting options around it. So I think it will stay where it was, which was low tier two. Yep. Um, I think you probably have to adapt your list a little bit and work in Mimikyu for the amount of uptick in Malolana. Yep. Um, but I think it's still relatively okay. Uh, so yeah still bad into ADP, so you can't think it's great or anything, but mm. um, it, it's okay. And you can, you, I know some Excadrills were playing like quad crushing just to try and slow down the ADP matchup as well. Just yeah. kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, it's a decent uh, one prize fighting deck, which fills a good niche in the format. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm a fan of Excadrill. That's another Pokemon that I like a lot. But <laughs> no, good deck, good deck, good one prize, good, good bit of damage. Creeps up on you. Oh, every time I play against Excadrill, I've lost quite a lot. I think, da, yeah, you know, we'll be fine. All of a sudden, it starts like two shot owner. It's grinched up with Crowbat that I really shouldn't have put down, but I was a bit greedy. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, I'm like, what's going on here? Like, they, I've got three prizes left, and they've got three prizes left, but they, I take one at a time, and they're taking two and three. So, um, yeah, don't underestimate it. Don't be like me. <laughs> Many times I've done that. <laughs> Now, let's go on to the other extra draw. Now, <clears throat> Control, interesting. Uh, control, I think it's been a bit of peaks and troughs. That's the correct phrase, right? Where I feel as yeah. if it got quite good, but all of a sudden, I don't know if everyone got bored of it or people just don't want to play it or the meta shifted in these online tournaments. But I didn't really see it crop up a lot more. Uh, I did see on Channel Fireball, though, uh, they put up a Snorlax-based uh, mill deck or stool, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to lump that in as well with this. Um have you first of all, Joe? Have you seen or the, that Snorlax build? How do you feel that would go? I saw, I saw the, I saw the channel Fireball uh, profile. Yeah, I think it seems reasonable for sure. It's nice not giving up Zacian prizes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm kind of on board with that. Um, you're afraid of all beetle. Other than that, I think you're pretty happy into most of the other new decks. Um, and I, I think uh, just to your point about it sort of dying off in hype, I think it was mostly down to the timer for the tournament tickets. Oh, it, was, it was 12 minutes yes. to win and you yeah. just you lose if your timer goes down. So no one played it in the tournament keys, but also not many people then played it in the actual Players' Cup too, maybe because they gained so much experience with yeah. other decks that they've been playing or whatever, yeah, you don't which is certainly reasonable. Um, but I thought the deck was okay. Uh, definitely hard to play. Mm. Um, so there's much easier decks you can get win- wins with. <laughs> yeah, I think right right now the ladder has a lot of Orbital, which is a problem. I also think Inteleon should be a difficult matchup as well. Yeah. Um, so if that gets a small uptick, that's a low-key issue for you. Um, I don't know. 
it feels weird for me to put it any lower than tier two. I think it should sit around that tier two area yeah. because it, it it forces so much brain power for your victories <laughs> in the first place, and things can go wrong anyways. So mm. I think around that tier two. I think Snorlax is fine in a different option and hopefully makes some of your welder matchups a little bit easier because you're giving away less prizes in the early game which yeah you know, the more turns control has the more cards it can draw effectively most of the time um which can only improve your win rate so mm -hmm. maybe maybe gaining some small percentage points into center scorch makes it slightly better as well we'll see we'll see where that ends up but i think around tier two is fine because even then it's going to be like two percent of the better share at any point yeah so. It's just, I feel the way it is now with no IRL events, I feel it's a lot easier to test control IRL than it is on ladder. Like, that's one reason why I haven't tried this, because I'm really in tune with the Starlight step, but you best believe I'm not bringing that to ladder. You you see some bonkers stuff on ladder. Someone we're playing, like, free ordinary world, and you're like, why on earth have you got another one of them? Like, what is going on? So, maybe I have to just lot, knuckle, down, yeah. knuckle down and someone do some, like, private match testing, because, oh, dear. And a lot of people just scoop out of boredom rather than them yes. actually having lost the yeah. game yet. So yeah. that can also skew your results. Yeah, yeah, th yeah, there's that as well. So <clears throat> Interesting time to be a control player for sure, let me tell you. Uh, now, Jeff, this is a deck, guys, that I even didn't even bother. Right? I didn't even <laughs> bother putting this on. And Jerry was like, oh, where's your Desi goons? I'm thinking, there's no way. There's no way this should still be a thing. And funny enough, I have ran into it a little bit. Maybe because I just hate playing against it. Um, I just thought, age slash ADP, I thought you'd be an absolute madman to even consider playing this deck still. But lo and behold, I have run into it and Jeremy put it back in. So, my question is to you, Joe. Number one, why did you put it back in? Number two, why are people still playing? You are you were crazy to still play this deck, right? I mean, that's when it's most dangerous. I think... Are people actually putting Age Slash into your, into their decks is the first question you have to ask. No, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's like, well, the tech's there, but the tech's been there for a ton of decks, and still people lose to Age Slash uh, to uh, to Desi Goons. Yeah. My, my low key hope is that my random Age Slash Quad V Max deck becomes popular enough to actually boot this deck aside. <laughs> but yeah. I don't think it will. No, no. Um, no. So. I think it's basically in the same meta position that it was, and then you just lose percentage points into ADP, yeah. which is already one of your lower win rate matchups anyway because of more yeah. cheesiness anyways. That's fair, yeah. So you could have lost that matchup anyway a lot, mm -hmm. so it doesn't actually change your matchup spread like at all other than Whimsicott becoming a new archetype. So yeah. you lose... You lose a. Like a few things get worse, but pretty much everything stays the same, yeah, it stays and the it's same. still top eighted events, and even won some online events here and there. So, I hate it. It's boring. You haven't played well to win the game with it ever. So, well yeah. done to you for running into the right matchup roulette on the right day. Yeah, congrats. <laughs> um, like if that's the way you want to play Pokemon, sure. Especially yeah. for on like, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get into it, but yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> like shove it in tier two i guess tier two. but you, you need yeah. to have some plans to play it now that's i all. guess yeah but it's one of those things where like as long as you're monitoring the meta and actually seeing the successful list and whether they are choosing to or choosing not to mm. um is where you where you place your stake in desi like it, yeah. it gets a bit riskier but it's basically the same deck that it was before yeah no yeah i see what you're saying for sure all I know is, whenever I'm playing ADP, you best believe if you see Mighty so Goob on TCGO, I <laughs> will have that Aegis Lash and I will quick ball it ASAP. <laughs> so don't you even try that against me. <laughs> don't even, don't hopefully, even. <laughs> hopefully in the early meta, there's enough Orb Beetle still around as well that yeah, will also body it. And, you're scary. So that's off, fine. Yeah. <laughs> hope you, if you were desk gonna hope you went into all the whims of carts and they decimate you. <laughs> oh yeah. dear. But you best believe, yeah, Marty Groove, I am playing that age slash. Don't even me, I'm not even contemplating losing to that thing of ADP. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> right. But I've got one of the I've, this one's managed to st stick around to the almost the end for some reason. 
Uh, Eternatus. And I feel as if Eternatus, Joe, is always my break glass when I'm doing bad deck. If I've lost like five games in a row trying to record some fancy deck uh, and, I, and I need to just get my uh, get my hopes back up, I just, 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 just get that Eternatus with the old stamp plant spirit too. Man, I know that's probably not the best way to play it, but that's how I like playing it. Um, the best way to play it, Gio, number one, what is the best way to play it? Number two, how high up does it go? Because it used to be a real big contender, but I do hear inklings on Twitter and Verbank now. It's not that good anymore. I think y'all crazy. But um, what do you think? Well... I've always been a hater of Eternatus, personally, okay. in terms of playing it. Okay. Um, so I may be slightly biased. I okay. think Power Plant is the best stadium for the deck. I think Poison Build... I mean, the thing... Okay, so Poison Build gives you a chance against Loot Metal. Yeah. But you are pretty damn clunky, I think. Yeah, quite no, a lot. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think Power Plant giving you percentage points against ADP, Senti, and Picarom and Mewtwo outweighs mm. a bit better Luke Metal that you will still probably lose in yeah. most situations. Mm -hmm. um, I so I think I think Plant is stronger, for sure. Um, like we've said a bunch already, fighting's not so intimidating that you can't play the deck anymore. Yeah, You do play... Well, you have a colorless in your attack cost, so you can even play weak guards if you really choose to. Yeah. Um, and the fighting decks won't play um, Giratina, I don't think. No. Because Excadrill doesn't have the board space mm -hmm. uh, and doesn't play Scoop Up Nets. And Colossal probably won't play Scoop Up Nets either um, yeah. unless they're playing Stellar Wish. But Stellar Wish is worse than Amazing Red Jirachi um, because it has the synergy for stacking fightings to the top yeah. of your deck. Yeah, yeah, you can just do um, that for sure. So, so I think Eternatus can adapt to fighting if it is popular. And I don't think it's going to be that popular. Yeah. Anyways um i think more luke metal is a headache i think you lose percentage points against inteleon with the new scope yeah uh picarom essentially the the rise of picarom actually led to like a lot more losses for eternatus because yeah. of just crushing um, hammer yeah nonsense sure. essentially um so i think eternatus is around 1.5 1.5 ultimately yeah i think it was i think it was extremely overhyped as we uh got into the latter stages of, of uh of Darnus or oh, sorry, of Champions Path meta. I think it was extremely overhyped for what it could actually do. And I think yeah. it will sit at 1.5 because it's still very consistent and it's still high damage output and ridiculous hit points. Mm -hmm. Um but I think the other decks above it in the format all have a good shot against it in the first place. Mm. Um and it gains some kind of more awkward matchups here and there as well. So yeah. Yeah, no, it all seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, I'm a fan of Eternus, but yeah, I've never really got on with a poison build myself. Like you said, it's it is a bit of a clunk city, and like you said, power plant. In my opinion, at least, is uh, stopping the Denes. That's the only reason I'm playing. Get that boy down I'm... turn one. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I'm a fan of Eternus, but I do feel I don't think you can have it in the tier one anymore. So I do think people are right, but. Um, shout out to Celia's network. I think he tweeted the other day he was in some event, right? Um, and what was he was playing against an Eternatus that had uh, the weak guard and struggle gloves. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so people, the Eternatus oh, players, he, he they was are playing scared. colossal as well. Was yeah, yeah, colossal? yeah. He was. Yeah, he lost to it. Yeah, he lost to it. Yeah. So you love he... to see it. You love to see the struggle gloves coming out. <laughs> That's for them. You're like, wait, no. <laughs> struggle gloves that shouldn't even work if you've got a weak guy it's such an insult <laughs> like <laughs> so I guess the Eternatus players they are winning a bit shook right now any Eternatus players leave in the comments how scared are you of the fighting decks I'd be intrigued how hard are you teching are you even teching I don't know or, uh, I mean you're definitely not double teching like that That's. I don't think I'd ever do that personally I don't think struggle gloves should ever see play in any deck <laughs> no I don't think it's a good card at all but it, 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 it got that fellow the win in that scenario, so which is mad okay. to think. Right, we've got a few left. Now, Joe, you were hyping up baby clowns, and I think I've heard you say in some video before, it might have been us talking before, that you think baby clowns has no reason to go anywhere, and it might be getting better. Is that still your uh, verdict? Yep. I no. think Bounds is very, very strong. Um, I, I mean, it's decent into Luke Metal, Pika Rom, ADP. Decent into Center Scorch. Um, yeah. Inteleon, your your matchup against Inteleon may actually be getting better as well because if people are going to telescopic sites, they might be playing less um, Zigzagoon 
Uh, and yeah. the bigger problem for that for you in that matchup is that they kill your Jirachis. Um, so you could actually be gaining percentage points against Inteleon. Um, so yeah, I think Blounds is very good against the other top tier decks. Uh, I would put it in tier one quite happily. Yeah. Um, I think it's absolutely very, very good. And I think the include of one Cramorant, one Reshizard is perfect for the deck as well, by the way. I think those includes are, are nutty. Okay. Yeah, well, when you said it has, you know, decent this, that, 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 okay, I have to take this seriously. <laughs> like, you can't, <laughs> can't mess about. I just hate losing to it. Uh, just nothing drives me insane. I think my Twitter location is still Baby Clown Slaughtering Ground because I absolutely despise it. But it did, uh, it did very well in Players Cup as well. Its conversion was strong. Was it? Oh. Mm -hmm. And I think Zapto shout out to you. Like he's been doing quite well with it in the OPOP league as well. And he's so, um, you know, Stefan. Just a bit. Just a bit. Yeah. yeah just a bit. It's just... I don't know. I guess when you're one prize, I can do 350. <laughs> you know, you're going to be good, aren't you? In one turn as yeah, well. Pretty good. Stupid. Pretty good. Stupid card. Stupid deck. Can't stand it. <laughs> right we've got three left don't worry about these two <laughs> Mewtwo Mews they were accidents <laughs> I thought I put the world in Coke on them but I didn't so we've got three left now Joe let's start off uh, we'll start off with Phalanx we've covered quite a few flying decks here but I feel as if this is the one that I think has the least reason to play as much as I like four links and I like the funny Pokemon and it's really cool in Sword and Shield when you see him running about in a line um, I don't think they're very good is that that's pretty safe for it, I feel. It's no different from pre vivid voltage. And yeah. you haven't seen it do anything pre vivid voltage. So yeah. there you go. I don't, I don't know why I've seen some people talking about stone energy in there. Like on what planet do you think you're getting them attached? Like you're actually insane. <laughs> oh, with Kufner's tape and stone, you can take this type like, yeah. <laughs> if you if you think stop. if you think B is gonna change like how good Phalanx is, like come on now. Like <laughs> think, stop. Yeah. Stop. I think I actually ran into a quad Phalanx GX deck the other day when they were trying to Yeah, with, with B to accelerate. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Yeah, and I'll tell you yeah. what, that was a quick game too. <laughs> Get out I mean, of way, please. If you're going to try something like that, I think you should try like a quad Glarian Sir Fetched instead. That, yeah. That's probably way better. Yeah. And still terrible, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I might just try it just to see, just because I like to play Phalanx, but I don't think it's very good. Um, I think it's... I don't no, even it's think. It's not fun. It's I don't, not fun. I was, you literally, scoop, I was about, to say, I was about to say. Yeah. I don't think it's even fun anymore because at least for Phalanx back in the day, you did have chance of winning games. But I just don't see. Like, look at this. Like, how how are you beating Sentry? How are you beating? How are you beating Luke Metal? You're doing like ten. <laughs> like that. Could, this could be a thing. You're doing I've ten. See, I've seen many Phalanx lose to Picroms and Eternatus. The deck is garbage. Yeah. Complete garbage. That's it. Like, they knock out one Phalanx. They tag bolt two more. What are you attacking with now, son? <laughs> what are you attacking him now, son? Yep. I'll, I'll answer that question for you. You're not attacking. <laughs> yep. Right. More Peko V Max. I managed to lose to Azul with this in the OPP. And then I tell you what, oh, I was low yeah. key. A hatred was burning inside me that day. Um, <laughs> and I guess it gets uh, long view now. One of the many other older archetypes that, you know, gain uh, long view. Um, is that what it's called? Long view, I think, or tele te it's telescopic. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it got initially translated as long view, didn't it? I think that's yeah, yeah. cooler. But anyway, um, is there any reason to play a more Peko as a um, telescopic site user? I feel that there's many better options. I mean, its damage is still quite low, um, so its spread is like fifty now to V and GX. Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, 50 is such an ugly number. You still yeah. need to attack so many times. It's not really a needle mover, is it? No. I don't... It's a shame. I, I feel like I want to play it more than Darmanitan because its weakness is less trash. And you do have some good lightning stuff to fall back on. But I still think it's, you know, in and around that area. Maybe high tier 3. Like, maybe top of tier 3, I think, is a good place for it. Okay. I hear your reasoning. But <laughs> I can't You're put going it over, higher. I can't put no. I can't put it over G Dom. G Dom. I don't know. To be fair, no. Let's it's put my... No, don't <laughs> worry. Don't worry about that. They'll just, you know, they'll prize all four of them. Don't worry about it. And still beat you with more while. <laughs> don't worry about it, Joe. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't worry. Okay, right. Tier three. Okay, let me put my serious hat on. Okay. So let's go to tier three. We've got Turbo, we've got Vickle Vault, we've got okay, okay, yeah, G Dark. Okay, what's in what's above that? World of Mewtwo. Da no, it can't be I can't put it on the same tier as uh, like a Rilla Boom and a Don Fan, I don't think. So yeah, I think I think top of tier three seems sensible to me. Yeah. Um you could even I've seen someone saying about going down like what is the memory charm thing and memory like, capsule yeah that's yeah. the one um what any other quick thoughts on that do you feel there's any warrant with that i mean bosses still played heavily so bosses still played heavily i agree yeah <laughs> and and if you think 180 is not really a needle mover wait till you see 150 <laughs> like you know what i mean that doesn't even two shot some of these v maxes you know what i mean Boss sure is still played you're correct yes yeah, so... let's not play memory capsule <laughs> memory capsule more pecker just <laughs> two words <laughs> if you play more pecker already you know my, my ears are pricking up now i've been playing memory capsule as well oh my lord okay yeah. so the last one I've got a Saber Light and a Turbo Patch here. So um, so what I'm thinking of here is it has gained Ore Beetle as a potential way to get damage in play. Uh, whether or not that's better than a Roxy or Ziggy Nets, I'm not sure. But um, Saber Light is a strong attacker, in my opinion. Um, do you feel as if there's any headroom? Does like is Ore Beetle good enough to where you can go like an Ore Beetle, Saber Light, maybe mixing up the attacks here and there? Cause you're playing Turbo Patch already. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's weird because Orbital's not fast enough for for you to not play Roxy or for you to not mm. play Zigzagoon anymore. So yeah. you, you, Sableye Turbo Patch already was actually quite tight with its spaces because yeah, you was, need yeah. to naturally have a high energy count to actually make the Turbo Patches work in the first place and all that other stuff. So you don't have that much space to actually weave Orbital into the previous packages that we had. Mm -hmm. So I think I think you're right. A split of energy would be the most realistic where you try and all beetle first and weave in Sableye um on like one or two key turns and hope that that's like a big swing for you but it's it's mix maxing energies it's yeah it's just making the game plan it, it's muddling a game plan really and still relying on coin flips as your acceleration which is yeah. kind of scary when there's already coin flip energy removal in the format <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you're you're muddling up you're either making a new deck that's kind of muddled and is trying to pull itself in two directions or you're committing spaces to an already clunky deck <laughs> that didn't have space in the first place. So you'd really be cutting a lot of corners just to fit an all beetle into the existing <laughs> Sable, Sable Eye decks. So I think uh, like all beetle may just be a trap and it may not be even worth playing in Sable Eye. Yeah, so. no, for sure. I My initial thoughts, I, mean, I haven't Grant, I haven't tried all beetle, but I have played an embarrassing a lot of Sableye Roxy. Um, and I've played a lot of it to the point where I don't think all Beatles worth it. I, I literally, I don't feel as if getting damage in play, I don't think is ever that much of a problem with Sableye. Like, you can get the damage in play. It's whether or not you're attacking with crazy. Yeah. That's the, that's, that's the problem. Like if the XP yeah. share was in format, we're laughing, we're away, but it's not, unfortunately. So I don't think the odd eerie beam here or there is the difference maker personally. Um, no, I agree with you. Yeah, so with that being said, so I'm just going to assume that we're rating this without all beetle. Uh, man, it's a fun deck to play when those turbo patch your heads <laughs> and their tails. It's a very sad deck to play. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Where where would this one go? I'm not even sure. It's like the fun or it's tier three. Yeah, I think, I think fun. fun. Like, I'm putting it at the top of fun because... It's Go like on, right man. on that cusp. I'm gonna Maximum say Maximum fun. Yeah, I think oh, Clefable doesn't seem to want to move, so I guess it's there. Try and move the Clefable out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Push the oh, there Clefable we... instead. There we go. There we go. Hang on, easy. There we go, right. <laughs> so yeah say a blast sorry mate but you stay in there uh g-dar above that makes sense right so there is the finished article boys and girls looking at this now joe now that you've got everything planned out before we wrap everything up do you feel as if anything needs moving about now that we can see things like, is that really as good as that or i think the only thing that's maybe harsh is welder mewtwo i think i'd prefer that to be top of 2.5 that of would two. be the only thing that I'd, like i still don't think there's enough reason to actually play the deck. And I think everything like two and above, I can at least respect someone playing that deck. Yeah, yeah. And like, me. if 2.5 down, you're, you're either making some bold meta calls for a small card pool, or you're enamored by the archetype and how it plays. And fair yeah. enough, if that's yeah, the yeah. case. Um, or you're experimenting or whatever. So 
Uh, I think if you're highly competitive, look at two and above. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of the line in the sand that I'm trying to make, and I think yeah, we've done yeah. a good job at outlining yeah. those. Yeah, like as like like you said, like if you're looking at online results, for example, if you see anything two and up, you're not thinking what. Like you think, okay, yeah, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, yeah, like mm. any of those decks, if I saw in a Hegster or whatever, or a Chill, you know, doing well, that's like, not. Re I'm not going to be taken aback. But um, if I did see a Rillaboom in there, for example, as much as I love Rillaboom, I enjoy playing it. I would be a bit like, easy. Oh, okay. Let me yeah. see, let me see if I can see that list. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think we've done quite well there. Well done, Joe. We've done quite well there. The floor is yours now. On the off chance you watch the video, you don't know who Joe is or what he Joe does. The floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I love talking the tier list. It, it really makes things more clear in my mind as well because mm. you put me on the spot for certain decks that I haven't necessarily played or thought about much and have to think about the new cards and how it all pieces together. So it keeps me on my toes. Um, gives me some potential ideas as well as we just talk about some stuff here and there. So it's been a lot yeah. of fun. Uh, my YouTube channel is Omnipoke. Um, so if you want to go ahead, if you liked anything you heard from me today, hopefully you'll enjoy it over there as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's it really. Yeah, make sure you go check them out. I've always said, I've always said this from the start. Only Pokemon, my favorite Pokemon content creators. You know, they put out the best decks. You, you never do bad of an Omni Poke list. Put it that way. It's always on the ball. Good, insightful uh, videos where you learn how to play the decks in an optimal way. And that's not something you sometimes get. I'm not even gonna lie to you. But uh, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, you know what I mean. And you're not subscribed to me. You don't know. You hit that button. Two hours. You must have liked something or whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, if you're after uh, more vivid voltage deck profiles and gameplay, check the players out there. I've got I think like 50 deep now at some point. So go go have a look at them. But uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.